June 20th, 2022, the date I started writing this script in earnest. Cartoon Network's schedule for the day, after it switches from its toddler-themed block known as Cartoonino, consists of four shows, running from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., when a special airing of Spy Kids 2 starts before rolling into the Adult Swim block. The four shows in question for the eight hours of Cartoon Network proper are Craig of the Creek, Teen Titans Go!, The Amazing World of Gumball, and a single episode of Wee Baby Bears for variety's sake. Flashback to 1999, before Cartoonino, and Adult Swim, and the closest full schedule to the same date, that being June 21st. Starting at the same time, at 10 a.m., the schedule consists of Dexter's Lab, Cow and Chicken, What a Cartoon Show, Two Stupid Dogs, Beetlejuice, The Addams Family, The Flintstones, The Jetsons, The New Scooby-Doo Movies, Cartoon Cartoon of the Day, which would be a random cartoon cartoon, and Acme Hour, a small block consisting of random Looney Tunes shorts. We then take flight on the Absolution for Toonami, and Sailor Moon, Reboot, Dragon Ball Z, and The Real Adventures of Johnny Quest. After Toonami, we get Batman, Animaniacs, and Scooby-Doo Where Are You? And while the schedule technically continues still, to be as fair as possible to the comparison between eras, we'll stop there. If we take out the few spots that could be considered repeats, like Scooby-Doo Where Are You and the Cartoon Cartoon of the Night, and if we do not count Toonami, since it may be considered different from Cartoon Network proper, that gives us close to 13 shows in the span of around 6 hours of programming. But the question is, how did we get here? To understand that, we need to go back. Back to the very start. Introducing the real deal. The $1.59 breakfast buddy combo at Burger King. What? Sorry, Evander, but Burger King has the winning combination. A hot breakfast buddy sandwich with crispy hash browns and fresh coffee is now just $1.59. And a breakfast buddy with sausage is only 59 cents. That's a good deal, but I'm the real deal. Uh, let's not fight about it. Smart move. Your way, by the way, Burger King now. The year is 1992. Disney is continuing its golden age with the release of Aladdin. He unleashed a genie who's polite. What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Who's helpful? The exits are here, 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 anywhere. Who's eager to please? Oh, no way! <laughs> the comic book movies peak with Batman Returns. Drop into McDonald's. Where Batman Returns is on a dramatic series of 32-ounce collector cups with fine, crispy bat disc lids straight from the movie. You can pick up a large drink in one of six superhero collector cups at a special price when you buy any extra value meal. Because what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Wow. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Street Fighter 2 are kings of home consoles. October 1st, 
two pieces of television history occurred. The Simpsons aired its classic streetcar named Marge. I am not an easy man to work for. While directing Hats Off to Hanukkah, I reduced more than one cast member to tears. Did I expect too much from fourth graders? The review, play enjoyed by all, speaks for itself. Hmm. And the Cartoon Network was launched with a massive bang. To the world's first and only cartoon network. While not the first network targeted towards kids, it was the first 24 7 network dedicated to them. While a risk, the Turner Company already had huge success with 24 7 news network CNN. And with their massive catalog of cartoons from WB, including Mary Melodies and Looney Tunes shorts, Anna Barbera, and a bit of the MGM catalog, Cartoon Network had all the tools to succeed. The first program to air on the network was Droopy's Guide to the Cartoon Network which was a program that would air several times in the early days, as an intro to the network and what to expect from it. The biggest show in town is Huckleberry Hound for all you guys and gals. Can we keep that gorilla in the window? We've got a gorilla for sale. Don't kill a gorilla for sale. The mouse with actual tech. What he gave him is a swing and navigator. It also led to the first cartoon ever to be aired on Cartoon Network, which was the Mary Melody short, Rhapsody Rabbit, starring Bugs Bunny. You're not talking tune. We now present Rhapsody Rabbit with that musical maestro, Bugs Bunny, star of Bugs and Daffy Tonight, weeknights on the Cartoon Network. A classic and classy short to start the life of the network, and the one to show what the network would be about from the start. The classics. Cartoon Network had classics, thanks to the aforementioned massive library that Turner had acquired. It had some of the greatest cartoon stars at its disposal, leading to Cartoon Network calling itself home of the top toon stars. And that boast was well warranted. Cartoon Network really did have the top stars, from household names like Looney Tunes and the Flintstones, Scooby-Doo and Tom and Jerry, it also had access to many more obscure stars, like the Catanooga Cats, Peter Potamus, Devlin, the Hair Bear Bunch, and the scores of Scooby-Doo ripoffs like Jabberjaw and the amazing Chan and the Chan Clan. Don't just stand there, do something! Yeah, get us down! <laughs> get us up! Get us out! Oh. But what was great about Turner's deal, and the fact that they had recently bought Hanna-Barbera before the launch of the network, was it not only meant they owned the Hanna-Barbera library, but they also owned the Hanna-Barbera animation studio, which meant that they had an in on new programming and cartoons that they were coming up with, which meant that they would not have to only rely on older cartoons. In a pitch video for the Cartoon Network, 
they showed that they were already in productions of shows such as Pirates of Dark Water and Fish Police. They're already busy making new tunes that will end up on the Cartoon Network in the years ahead. I'm a cop who's a carp. And would later produce the cult classic cartoon SWAT Cats. Time to clip his wings, Razor. Roger. Launching Turbo Blade. They would also go on to help create what would be Cartoon Network's first truly original programming, but that would not come until a year later. Howdy, stranger. In its first year, Cartoon Network would air many of their shows on a seemingly random schedule, but they also had specific blocks to highlight certain shows by theme or characters. Of course, Droopy got his own show with Down with Droopy D. Ooh. Let's take a closer look at one of the most active, most exciting, most energetic superstars of the cartoon universe, Droopy Dog. Well, who did you expect to see? The president? After moving to Hollywood, Droopy got his first big break, and it wasn't long before fame and fortune were his. Thank you, sir. Droopy's film career is legendary, but what about the private Droopy, the man behind the dog? You know what? I'm happy. Apparently, Droopy prefers to let his sex symbol status speak for itself. <coughs> However, Droopy's secret love is music. After years of practice, Droopy Dog is now Droopy D. Vanilla Ice, move over. Back off, Zamphir. So whether it's his classic acting or his fresh new beats, the world agrees. Droopy D is the slamminess pooch in the hood. Get down with Droopy D. We face it too. On the home of the top two stars. The Cartoon Network. But the Looney Tunes shorts had the Bugs and Daffy show. Bugs and Daffy, they exploded onto the scene. They experienced the usual knocks of showbiz. Now they're back where they belong, in prime time. So break a leg, guys. Bugs and Daffy tonight, weeknights at 9 on... The Cartoon Network. And we even saw the birth of Boomerang. As a block of shows pitched as a way for adults to rediscover their old favorites from the 60s and 70s, and to introduce them to their kids. The Cartoon Network knows times have changed, styles have changed, you've changed, but your favorite cartoons haven't. Boomerang brings back your two favorites from the 60s and 70s, Huck Hound and McKilla Gorilla, just as you remember them, but now without commercial interruption. Quick Draw and Secret Squirrel, uncut originals. You know you miss them, and your kids don't know what they've missed. So get together for Boomerang, Sunday morning at 10 on The Cartoon Network. And in a somewhat precursor to Toonami, Super Adventure was a block dedicated to more action-adventure cartoons, like Fantastic Four, Birdman and the Galaxy Trio, and Space Ghost. By evening, you're pumped, feeling adventurous. You could zap any one-eyed, six-armed rock monster to cross your path in Super Adventures and Johnny Quest. But the most unique block was called Toon Heads, which was originally a late-night block meant to highlight older, weirder, and obscure cartoons centered around some sort of theme. It also included facts and trivia about the cartoons, its creators, and history. This week on Toon Heads, it's Barney Bear Unplugged. Unglued is more like it. This guy is definitely not smarter than the average bear, but he has that special talent for turning the simplest endeavors into full-blown disasters, which is why we've devoted the whole week to him. For a while, the checkerboard era, as it would later be called, was very light and took little chances trying to appeal to everyone. The advertisement for the channel emphasized the fact that you could get all your favorite cartoons whenever you wanted, and marketed it to both kids and adults. Promos and advertisement for the network would show everyday people of all ages talking tunes, which would be them replicating tune sound effects. We're talking tune here! Right, boy. Bam! Wow. All tunes all the time. We're the Cartoon Network. Boy. And the other bumpers would be segments clipped from the Guide to the Cartoon Network special. Most all other bumpers would be very simple and mostly using clips from the shows, punched up by a narrator, letting you know what to expect from the show. Know your tunes. A 60-second lesson in tune evolution. First, there was the Stone Age. Move rocks all day. Come home to a little brontosaurus on the butt. Then, along comes the Space Age. Push button living, the perfect marriage of man and machine. Of course, some things aren't so different. Take transportation, exercise, 
housework, or the challenges of raising a family. Dads are still dads. Teenagers are still teenagers. And the boss is still the boss. And what about man's best friend? He's still around. Which just goes to prove, the more things change, the more they remain the same. Catch the Flintstones and the Jetsons. Weeknights beginning at 8 on the home of the top tune stars, the Cartoon Network. To celebrate the launch of the network, a crossover event was held on Black Friday of 1992 across the Cartoon Network, TNT, and TBS, who ran simultaneous events and marathons called the Great American Tune It. It's unbelievable. Check out the Johnny Quest Fest on TNT, or switch to the bugs -thon on TBS, and be sure to catch tunes A to Z on the Cartoon Network. So touch that dial, because no matter where you turn, there's another tune. The Great American Tune In, all day the day after Thanksgiving. Remember, there's always room for more tunes. Uh. TBS hosted a bugs -a thon a 24-hour marathon of 52 classic Bugs Bunny cartoons, followed by the Jetsons Meet the Flintstones, and the Dr. Seuss classic, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, kicking off the Christmas season. When what you were wondering eyes did appear, but a Grinch looking fatter, and Max, his reindeer, he slithered with a smile most unpleasant. He took the roast beast, he took every present. Then he exclaimed as he slunk out of sight, I'll stop Christmas from coming if it takes me all night. TNT presented a Johnny Quest Fest, a 14-hour marathon of Johnny Quest episodes. It's TNT's Johnny Quest Fest, all day today on TNT. And finally, the Cartoon Network hosted Cartoons A to Z, featuring animated stars from A to Z. And at the crack of dawn, <laughs> clocks at nine, but something sure oh, seemed oh, wrong. Oh, My house was changing, oh, and so was I. Oh, oh. Things were rearranging, now I realize why. At the start, Cartoon Network was not available on all cable packages, but since they had the power of Turner behind them, they were able to push for more reach, including a promo VHS tape in 1993 called A Taste of Cartoon Network, which gave, as the name suggests, a taste of what you would get by requesting Cartoon Network from your local cable provider. The tape you're watching is just a taste mwah, of the Cartoon Network, an appetizer, a mere morsel of what you can expect from the first and only 24-hour Cartoon Network. Why, if you had the Cartoon Network, you could have breakfast each morning with Bernie Burnout and the Morning Crew. Four hours of your favorite tune stars, like Huck Hound, Quick Draw, Adam Ant, and Wally Gator. And then, do lunch with the Smurfs, Tom and Jerry, and Groupy. There's also a superhero afternoon snack to tide you over, until you sit down to dinner with the first families of the Cartoon Network, the Flintstones and Jetsons. And if you haven't had the banana splits for dessert yet, Fill up on Bugs and Daffy tonight and settle your late night appetites with Toon Heads, a unique blend of the bizarre and unusual. Imagine 24 hours of your favorite Toon Stars for you and your whole family. As you watch this video, remember, it's only a taste of what you'd see if you had the Cartoon Network. So contact your local cable operator and ask them to add the Cartoon Network to your basic cable lineup. As well in 1993, we got an even bigger version of last year's Great American Toon It now called The Great International Tune It, as it was now being broadcast internationally on Turner's channels in Latin America and Europe. The Great International Tune In, el viernes 26 de noviembre. The Great International Tune In was a crossover event between six Turner channels around the world. TBS, TNT, and Cartoon Network in the US, TNT and Cartoon Network in Latin America, and TNT slash Cartoon Network in Europe, since the two were technically on the same channel sort of like a modern-day Adult Swim situation. Good evening and welcome to TNT. Since this was an international event, and therefore larger in scope, the network felt it needed a host of some kind to bring it all together which led to the birth and introduction of Cartoon Network's first original cartoon star. Hello, I'm Moxie. Welcome to the great international tune-in on TNT, TBS, the Cartoon Network's best tune-in ever. I come from planet Dogtavia, and on my planet, I am the ruler. Someday, dogs will take over the world. Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> 
Moxie was a computer-generated character first used to host the Great International Tuna. In a leap forward in animation technology, a real-time animation rig was used to control his actions and movements, making him a very early example of what we would consider a modern-day VTuber. Do an impression of Guns N' Roses. Do an impression of Guns N' Roses? Yes. Okay. <laughs> he was voiced by comedian Bobcat Goldthwait. During the tune-in, he would appear in hosting segments where he would interact with real-life kids, ask them questions, crack jokes, and so on. It's the great international tune-in! But more importantly, it's me, Moxie! And I'm showing you a cartoon so funny, they make your spleen hurt! And you're watching them along with people all over the world on TBS, TNT, and the Cartoon Network. Do you guys speak any other languages? Yes. Yeah. What language do you speak? They speak German. German. I wonder how they say spleen in German. Bad spleen? <laughs> say hello from America. Hello, hello from Deutschland. Deutschland. Are you Deutschland? from America? From America. Yeah. yeah. Toya, what? <laughs> After the tune-in, Moxie's show premiered proper on December 5th and would run for two years. And now, it's time for the Moxie Show! Hi, um, I'm Moxie, and, uh, uh, that's Fleet, and, um, I think you better dance now! The Moxie Show, also known as the Moxie Pirate Show, was not so much a show, per se, but really a sort of variety show, which would see Moxie running a sort of pirate TV station, along with his new flea sidekick, voiced by Penn Jillette of Penn & Teller fame. Hey, I was watching Bruce Flea. My show's gonna be on. I'm gonna be a big star. I'll go exploring with Johnny Quest. Bowling with Fred Flintstone. Thinking like Pepe Le Pew. Yeah, I'm on right after this. First Dino, then... Me. To be honest, Fred, I don't think that's Dino. Hey, um, where's me? That was my shot. You have been cut, removed, deleted. They can't do that. This was my big prank. There's my nose. I am a star. Loser. Star. Loser. Star. Loser. 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 Ah! Loser. Star. But in later shows, it will be replaced by Chris Rock. Moxie, 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 something's been bothering me. What, Lee? What's up with that nappy, wappy orange do you got working? Convertible hair. Hey, at least I got hair. All you got is, um, um, uh, what is that on your head? This, my friend, is a brim, and it's down by law. The show would be another excuse to show classic cartoons with these new interstitial shorts of the two characters. While many consider this to be the first Cartoon Network original show, I tend to personally disagree. I can say that Moxie was Cartoon Network's first original character, but the Moxie show is less a show and more just a less educational version of Toon Heads. You just need something that you say all the time that people relate to you. I got it like, like, like I'd say, howdy, stranger, where are my slacks? No, you, you can't say that. It's going to make sense. You know, like, uh, yabba dabba doo. Oh, now I get it. Okay, what about... That's a really good one. There is evidence of a pilot episode of the Moxie and Flea show when Chris Rock was voicing, which seems to be a full, actual, original show. But it didn't lead to anything. Look at it! I don't understand this. Our brain probe shows no reading. The intelligence content of the orange one here is nil. The purple one, however, seems a little brighter. He may be of some value to us. Excuse me, um, don't take this the wrong way, but who are you? I am Dale from the Chip Planet. Oh, hello, Dale. I'm Max, and this is my friend Flea. Flea, Dale, Dale, Flea. You two kids uh, have a lot. Now, McGilla, where are we? Where's our ride? But it wouldn't be until 1994. The Cartoon Network would not only get its first truly original program, but a major boost in its connection to older audiences. Space Ghost! Mm -hmm. 
Space Ghost first debuted in 1966, paired with Dino Boy shorts, on a show called Space Ghost and Dino Boy. Space Ghost was a space-traveling superhero voiced by the former laugh and star Gary Owens, who, with his sidekick, Jan, Jace, and a monkey named Blip, would travel the galaxy fighting crime and supervillains like Zorak, Moltar, and the space pirate Brack. Aha! Space Ghost Ward! If he had answered that call, it would have meant your finish! While his original series only lasted two years, he got a revival in 1982 as part of the Space Stars, where he appeared with other space heroes like the Herculoids, Astro, and the Space Mutts, and the Teen Force. Together in an interstellar battle against evil. Blast off on adventures as big as the cosmos itself. Race, poised on the edge of time with Space Ghost and his young friends. But while Space Ghost was fairly well known and fairly popular as a superhero, he would become a household name when he retired from the superhero game and entered the wild and crazy late night talk show circuit. Who is that? Who's what? Who is that singing? You mean the one singing? No. Ah, like that? Eep, up, orc, uh-uh. Oh. No, the one who sings. Oh, her! Betty Rubble. Wednesday night at 9, only on Cartoon Network. Ghost Planet Industries, later known as William Street, was originally a team of three veteran Turner employees. Keith Crawford, Andy Merrill, and former mailroom employee Mike Lazo, who were appointed to run a former studio, which was now being used as a storage facility for Turner Tapes. The trio would be responsible for helping to produce footage for the Moxie show, but it was still being handled mainly by the Hanna-Barbera side. But when TBS started producing original cartoons like Captain Planet and Two Stupid Dogs, the trio decided to take their shot. The three attempted to pitch their show ideas to Turner himself, but were quickly kicked out of his office. Being told that if Cartoon Network did not start bringing in more money for the company, they would not be giving funding for any original projects. Thankfully, the three didn't listen. You better not pout. You better not cry. You better not shout. I'm telling you why. Because we said so. It's a Space Ghost Christmas, Wednesday night at 11, only on the Cartoon Network. Since they had access to all the Hanna-Barbera footage, they decided to use the footage from Space Ghost and Dino Boy, and interview footage that CNN already had access to, to create a shoestring pilot, which would later be released on the Volume 2 DVD set. This interview was not authorized by anyone. Yes, it was. It was just Cartoon Network Productions' idea of the format for the proposed show. B.S. <laughs> <laughs> Live from the Caesars Palace Resort Hotel on Ghost Planet, it's Space Ghost, coast to coast. Tonight, Space Ghost welcomes and chats about the Academy Awards. Now here's our host, that master of mayhem, that wizard of it, that ghost with the most, that super duper, all my powers are in my wristbands from Radio Shack kind of a guy, here's Space Ghost! Hello everybody, I'm Space Ghost, and welcome to my show. Tonight my guest will be and star of He's the star of that movie, alright, and here he is and pointing at people. So, hello, tell us about your first Oscar experience. With pilot in hand, the trio went back to Turner to pitch. And this time, they were granted ten whole episodes. And the rest, as they say, is history. Space Ghost, welcome to the show. Appearing with us on this episode will be the comedian Judy Tenuta and the dissident Dr. Timothy Leary. 
Say hello to my band, Zorak and the Original Way Out. First premiering in April 15th, 1994, Space Ghost Coast to Coast followed the premise of Space Ghost coming back to the public space as a talk show host, bringing with him his old enemies to help. Zorak, the lone locust of the apocalypse, is now the band leader, leading his band, the original Way Outs. <laughs> what y'all doing? Y'all? <laughs> yeah. To learn to talk like that. Hattiesburg. What were you doing in Hattiesburg? Kicking it. Oh, really? Yep. Well, that's interesting. It is interesting. Tom, is that interesting? No. And Moltar. What are you anyway, Moltar? I'm a poorly drawn lava kind of a molten man. And a poorly drawn lava kind of a molten man. Working as the director of the show. What made Space Coast very unique is that it was an animated talk show that would have real life guests. Some random. Some comedians and friends of the network who have worked on projects for a Cartoon Network before or since. Tell us, what's your secret identity? My secret identity? Like if you saw me in real life? Uh... Yeah, like if he saw you in real life. Uh... I did Joey Lawrence. Get out! I've got your album! <laughs> yeah, girl, you know it's true. And even some surprisingly big names. Greetings, citizen. Greetings, space ghost. Go on, tell everyone who you are. Come on. I am Charlton Heston. Yes! Our first Academy Award winner. Really? The interviews themselves would be recorded as normal interviews, being conducted by a random crew member, and then cut up and used to build the episode and its script around. In fact, some of the full uncut interviews can be seen in different places. We're rolling tape now. Thank you. Thank you, citizens at CNN LA. Greetings. Greetings. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and start now. Okay. Here we go. Greetings, citizen Matt. Welcome to the show. Have you seen my show? Oh, yes. I make it a habit of watching all shows that rhyme. Space Ghost Coast to Coast, of course. Uh, Dennis the Menace. Everything about this show was one to keep it cheap. That's not to disparage the show in any way, shape, or form, since this is a show that it has lived on in the memories of its audience to this day, and have spawned a whopping five spin-off shows, including Cartoon Planet, The Brack Show, and the mother of them all, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. No, when I say as cheaply as possible, it was a way for a new studio to make something creative with the resources that they had. In a behind-the-scenes video, they showed the process of taking the assets of the original Space Ghost show and manipulating them in order to be used on Coast to Coast. This is from the, uh, the Space Ghost uh, utility research kitchen. This is where Space Ghost Coast to Coast comes okay. together, well, where editor Tom Roach pirates animation from the old series. All the elements live on this one tape. They're all here. We use this one 90-minute tape over and over again. To turn yeah. his cartoon character into a talk show host with for real guests. We start with just snow. And then from snow, we put uh, the guest in. So what we'll do is we'll take this shot. We'll take the mat and key that right on top. Now, there's Michael Stipe. Now, I put him in a box where I can move him around. Then we move to this shot. And then Space Ghost and Michael Stipe are ready to carry on a conversation. The show's main cast was very minimal, only consisting of Space Ghost, played by voice actor George Lowe, who this was only his second credited voice acting role, the first being, funnily enough, a superhero parody, Super Ego, in the cult classic Beetlejuice cartoon, which also aired on the network. Super Ego! Oh gee, can I have your autograph? It would be my pleasure, citizen. Co-hosts Zorak and Moltar were both played by the late great C. Martin Croker, an animator who created promos for TNT Toons in the early 90s. TNT Toons! He would continue to voice Zorak and Moltar in various projects and work with Cartoon Network until his tragic death in 2016. Other Space Ghost characters would also pop up, including Brack, played by series co-creator, Annie Merrill. Hey! Ah! All hail Brack! No! Let Brack do the intro! Live from Ghost Planet, it's Brack! No! Let Brack sing the theme! No, 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 no! La 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 la! la. co 
coast to coast was the first time Cartoon Network was able to break out a little, escape the mold, and try something different. And even with its slow start, it was able to surprise everyone and start a new wave of older viewers to the network. But by 1995, it was time for Cartoon Network to rely on more than just old libraries and Frankenstein monster versions of those old shows. It was time to take some chances. This is Cartoon, this is Cartoon Network! Ball two, nothing but two, all day, every day, all around the world. The tunes are taking over. This is Cartoon, this is Cartoon Network. The Cartoon Network in the early days always had the ability to show some of the best cartoon movies they had access to. 1994 would see the airing of classic Hanna-Barbera movies such as Jetsons Meet the Flintstones, Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School, and even the animation classic Charlotte's Web. But in 1995, more specifically January 28, 1995, we would see an event that would be the start of a revolution for both the network and animation itself. You asked for it, and now the Cartoon Network's going to give it to you. Six hours of intense Japanese animation with Robot Carnival, Vampire Hunter D, and Twilight of the Cockroaches. Night nice Moon! It's the Cartoon Network's Night of the Vampire Robots, Saturday night at midnight on the best place for cartoons. Cartoon Network would air a special three-movie marathon to showcase three anime movies. There were a huge left-field airing on a young network that seemed to be tailored more to children. The three films in question were Robot Carnival, Vampire Hunter D, and Twilight of the Cockroaches. The films had previously aired on the Sci-Fi Channel on their own Saturday anime block. You've never seen anything like it. The energy. The imagination. The beauty. Those who know call it anime. You'll call it amazing. The Sci-Fi Channel Global Showcase presents the American television premieres of Robot Carnival, Lensman, and Vampire Hunter D. But while the Sci-Fi Channel airing was slightly edited, the Cartoon Network versions were even more so. Even with it airing so late at night, it was a huge turning point for the channel. Whereas before, the only anime that would air on the channel was G-Force, a.k.a. Gotcha Man. It would be the first step to Cartoon Network's long and fruitful relationship with anime. But we would need to wait a few more years for that broadcast to start. For now, Cartoon Network was about to start another animation revolution, in the form of their own original shows. Hanna-Barbera had plans to expand way back in 1992, when the network was still in its infancy. Fred Siebert, the president of Hanna-Barbera, wanted to start a shorts program to find the next big show. With the backing of Ted Turner himself, the call was put out for animators across the world for pitches. According to Siebert, quality didn't matter much to the cable operators distributing the struggling network. They were more interested in promising new programs. That seems like setting up a disaster but it would turn out to be one of the best things to happen to the network, and the start to a push in creator-owned animation that would set Cartoon Network apart from the rest. Once the call went out in 1993, over 5,000 pitches arrived to fill the 48 spots available. When the smoke cleared, we had a collection of young and hungry animators, who, while unknown at the time, would be later known as some of the biggest names in animation. A new generation. A new hope. Gendy Tartakovsky, Craig McCracken, Ron Razidi, Butch Hartman, John R. Dilworth, Seth MacFarlane, 
just a few of the unknown names involved in the What a Cartoon program over the years, who would use the program as a springboard to success. Even veteran creator Rolf Bakshi produced a short for What a Cartoon, although his short was considered too risque for a full series order. Don't stop playing. Whatever you do, don't stop playing. To promote the airing of each short, Hanna-Barbera produced a series of posters and sent them to various critics and animation heavyweights. On February 20th, 1995, in a sort of crossover with the popular Space Ghost Coast to Coast, a world premiere tune-in special was produced. Van Parton, Lokar, Pat Ventura, Metallic, Craig McCracken, Black Widow, Gendy Tarnikovsky, Tanzik, and Gino Matto. Hosted by Space Ghost himself and judged by the Council of Doom, several directors, part of the Cartoon Network program, were interviewed, including Pat Ventura. Tell us about your cartoon. Yucky Duck is a very hapless uh, character. You try to please, but no one appreciates it. It's like the world against him. Everything he touches just fouls up. Yeah. Van Partible. Citizen Van, you chose the Danish. Why? I have no idea. It was the only thing there. It was either a bagel or this cream cheese frosting thing. Food selection category. Council gives. Council would have chosen the bagel. Bad decision, Van. See, what I'm trying to do is chew and talk at the same time. Talking with your mouthful category. Council gives. Ooh, Van. Things aren't looking good. Gene Meadows. Just beamed in from the old Enterprise. Uh, thought he'd say hi. Shatner method acting. Council gives. Goose eggs. <laughs> Genny Tartakovsky. Tell us about your cartoon. Yeah, Dexter is a boy genius, and I... Survey says... Dexter's stupid. Ooh. What do you say to that, comrade? Hey! Hey, well, he can here! just go and have his own opinion and won't bother me at all. Hey, look at me! Self-restraint category. Council gives... Council gives... And Craig McCracken. What do you do? Uh, I make cartoons. I make uh, the Powerpuff Girls about these three little kindergarten age superheroes who fly around and beat up bad guys. Oh. Bunch of pansy fruit fruits with overgrown mutated eyes, if you ask me. We're not asking you. The episode was used as a lead in to premiere the first ever world premiere tune, which was the Powerpuff Girls. A cartoon that, despite some issues in development, would go on to be a worldwide phenomenon for the network. Power Pop Girls! A new tune would premiere every week or so for the rest of the year, taking a little gap between August and November. Shorts included Dexter's Laboratory, another future powerhouse of the network, Yucky Ducky, Johnny Bravo, another cartoon cartoon staple, Dino, a short produced by Hanna-Barbera themselves as a spin-off to their own established series, Fat Cats, Fish and Chip, Mina and the Count, and Cow and Chicken. While some shorts would receive additional episodes, only four of the original first year's shorts would be picked up for full series orders. After each short was aired, they would be paired together with three other shorts and re-aired in the What a Cartoon Show, which would re-air periodically in the schedule. Alongside the premiere of these new tunes, we also saw the premiere of a brand new program on Cartoon Network, Mr. Spim's Cartoon Theater. Get ready for the grand opening of the most amazing theater in the world, Mr. Spim's Cartoon Theater. Sunday, right after the debut of the brand new world premiere tune, Mr. Spim will be opening his doors for the very first time to show you the Cartoon Network premiere, A Brace for Your Life, Charlie Brown. It's one of the all-time great two movies starring everyone's favorite bald kid, Charlie Brown, and Snoopy, of course. So be there opening night at Mr. Spim's Cartoon Theater, Sunday at 7 p.m. on the greatest place for cartoons, the Cartoon Network. One of the many spin-offs to come from Space Ghost Coast to Coast will begin to air around this time. Hi, my name is Brock. Watch Cartoon Planet every night at 6. Every night with me, Brock. Watch it. Cartoon Planet on Cartoon Network. Originally airing on TBS, Cartoon Planet was a sort of sketch comedy show 
and was originally used to introduce various cartoons and shorts in the Turner Library. These segments would include Space Ghost, Zorak, and Brack, using the same footage as shown in Coast to Coast, but with a newer setting. Different segments on the show would include songs, Say that I'm a silly so-and-so, so-and-so, Tell me I'm not clever, cute, or cool, Trump on my big toe, darling, I still love you so. I'm just a crazy lovesick fool. Skits where the hosts would interact with each other. Hey, buongiorno, everybody. This is Nebraska, and it's time for learning to talk Italian. A lesson one. If you were in an Italian restaurant and you wanted to order the soup of the day, you would ask for the Zuppa di Giorno. Zuppa di Giorno. And were you interested in the squash of the day, you would ask for the Zucca di Giorno. Zucca di Giorno. And solo segments, like Zorak's horoscope, Brack's school days, and mailbag day. Here's a letter from one of my adoring fans. Dear Space Ghost, have you ever seen a lamb on top of a water tower? Do you like coffee and turkey giblets? You are a giant porkcock. How nice. Do you know Knickknack Paddywhack? Do you wear boxers or tidy whities That's none of your beeswax. Down the line, the show would move to Cartoon Network as a collection of the segments with no cartoons to set up. The show and segments would become so popular that the segments and songs would be compiled onto two CDs released by Rhino Records, who Cartoon Network had a partnership with. Hey, everybody! We're partying to our brand new record, Space Ghost Surfing Turf. 22 tiki torch tunes like these. Mashed potatoes! Bad bug, bad bug. I like bananas because they have no bones. Zorag's got the blues. Mooka looka, holla walla. Space Ghost Surf and Turf is available on CD and cassette at Sam Goody's and Musicland. Hey! Let go of my pants! I have a lot of personal connection to this show, much more than Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Never miss an episode or an airing during its Cartoon Network run and own both CDs and would play them all the time, even when I was out on bike rides. So tell me again about the 79 countries. It's like this. Cartoon Network's the same in those countries as it is here, except for little differences. Example. Okay. Know what they call pound puppies in Paris? They don't call them pound puppies. Nah, they don't have pounds in France. They have the metric system. Then what do they call them? They call them less puppies well. No way. Yeah. Well, what do they call Smurfs in Spain? Like a Smurf is a Smurf. They just call them Los Smurfs. Los is Smurfs? Yeah, and in Morocco, Morocco Mole is just called Mole. <laughs> wow, 200 million served. I can't see you over the view. As Cartoon Network would continue the world premiere tunes into 1996, including the debut of Courage the Cowardly Dog with the short The Chicken from Outer Space, and Pizza Boy, one of my personal favorite shorts. I gotta deliver this to the Arctic Circle! That's not <laughs> They were also starting to dip their toe into preschool shows, as well as live action. How many things can your child do with a pair of socks, a cardboard tube, a hat, and two spoons? When you watch Big Bag, the possibilities are limitless. So open the Big Bag and open your child's imagination. Big Bag will only be on Cartoon Network. Big Bag was a program co-produced by Cartoon Network and the Children's Television Network, now known as Sesame Workshop, which was a live action preschool show featuring human characters and Muppets created by the Jim Henson Company. And vacuum every place! Uh. <coughs> the show centered around a Muppet character named Shelly and his best friend Bag, who run a general store and learn and interact with different characters. The show ran from 1996 to 2000, with reruns airing until 2009. Despite this, it is a show that is mostly forgotten not being available to watch in any form 
apart from five VHS releases of the series. From Children's Television Workshop, the creators of Sesame Street, brand new to video, a full hour of non-stop surprises, Big Bad. Something cool is coming your way. To watch and play along is any bag full of ordinary stuff and lots of imagination. So join in the fun with Chelly, Molly, Bag, and all their friends. Oh, this is Bag, my best pal. Each tape features six different fun-filled cartoons, plus two original music videos performed by kids to dance and sing along with. The whole Big Bag gang is waiting for you to explore with us, share with us, imagine with us. Big Bag, it's a ton of fun for everyone. Come on, guys, let's get started. <laughs> Big Bad would be the first and only live action show produced by Cartoon Network until 2007. Alright boys. Cartoon Network. One, a two. Here I go, I'm about to freak the flow. About the Cartoon Network. And things they show. We got the super adventures, tune heads, and late night. It's black and white, but everything's alright. But I'll break it down a little bit more. Tell you what they have in store. What is tunes you're looking for? We got Brad Plus Stone and Bonnie Rubble. My man Top Cat, he causes trouble. Tom and Jerry, Bugs Bunny, Papa Adam, and One, Andrew B. But let's not forget about my homeboy Quest. Space Ghost and Terriens and the rest of the Galaxy Trio and the Fantastic Four. You know we got more. In store, secret squirrel and the banana splits. Thunder barbarian gives fits to the villains. But killer gorilla is still chilling. How much is the monkey in the window over there? But here come the Jetsons flying through the air. And we got the Smurfs running round over here. Right around the corner is the hill, Billy Bears. But now be pissed, stop calling flat but no spare. So Ali Ali action free, my man Dash the Lee and Mutt Lee. They be rolling with the MC, the morning crew with snaggle puss. And you know he's real true, yeah. Uh, but moving right along, cause we're coming to the end and pulling up the rear is yogi and his friends so tune in and gather around if you want to be down we got the best two stars around cartoon network all right boys cartoon network one a two cartoon network all right boys cartoon network one a two 1996 would also bring the airing of the first full show to come out of the one a cartoon program <laughs> Dexter's Laboratory was a cartoon created by legendary animator Gendy Tartakovsky about a boy genius who spends his days working in a super advanced laboratory, which he keeps secret from the world and his parents. However, his sister Dee Dee always seems to infiltrate his defenses and manages to disrupt and destroy whatever it is that Dexter's working on. Okay, okay, thank you, dear. But I want to press the button! The idea and conception for Dexter and Dee Dee were created all the way back when Tartakovsky studied at Cal Arts back in 1990, when he created an early pencil test of what would become the What a Cartoon short, Changes. After graduation, he would work with some of his classmates and future Dexter's Laboratory collaborators, Craig McCracken, Rob Renziti, Paul Rudish, and Lou Romano, on the production team for Two Stupid Dogs, before being offered a job on The Critic. Rosebud. Yes, Rosebud frozen peas, full of country goodness and green penis. Wait, that's terrible. I quit. Just a handful for the road. Mm -hmm. 
not satisfied with his position there, he would be offered a chance by former Two Stupid Dogs producer, Larry Huber, who had seen the pencil test for changes and thought it would be perfect for the upcoming What a Cartoon program. Tartakovsky took that chance, fully developed changes into a full short, and would be the second world premiere tune to air after the Powerpuff Girls. Hey, check out the buzz on Dexter's Laboratory. I like the cartoon because it's about a scientist that likes science. It was really cool. The music was awesome. The characters were cool. I liked the little girl. Her voice was great. The colors are great. The animation was great. It was funny and crazy. I liked the cartoon because I thought it was funny and cute. Thank you for letting me call in. I didn't like the cartoon because it was dumb. It was <laughs> stupid. We love the cartoon. It was really, really funny. My eight-year-old son sat here and laughed the whole time it was on. It was really cute. It was child-oriented, and we want more. It was very entertaining. And to me, it was as good as some of the old Warner Brothers cartoons. It was funny. I liked it. Thank you. Reminds me of home. It's great. Tune in for Dexter's Lab this week, and only this week. Then tune in Sunday night at 7 for our brand new world premiere tune on the best place for new tunes, the Cartoon Network. After its airing, through various phone campaigns, focus groups, and web votes, it was voted the most popular of the What a Cartoon shorts. And even with the success and the creation of a second short, Big Sister, Tartakovsky did not expect much in the way of a full series order. But luckily for all, Dexter's Laboratory was in fact approved for six half-hour episodes, and its first spin-off segment. Now a little rhyme about my brother, my Didi! <laughs> My brother Dexter is so lame, always bragging about his brain. That doesn't rhyme. Because two, where was I? Oh, yeah! He makes these machines that are very impressive. If you ask me, he's just a wee bit obsessive. CD! And when I pick the lock on a stupid old story, he screams, CD, get out of my laboratory! Get out of my laboratory! While actually first airing on TNT, it would soon make its way to Cartoon Network proper, and air with two segments, and a sort of spin-off segment, Dell M for Monkey, in which an ordinary-looking monkey in Dexter's lab lives a secret life as the superhero, Monkey. After countless experiments, all testing proves negative. No enhanced stabilities, no physical mutations, no nothing. It seems you shall never become anything more than a mere monkey. Monkey, this is Agent Honeydew. Help us. Another spin-off segment came later named The Justice Friends. The Justice Friends, three of Earth's mightiest heroes, joining forces under one roof to face the challenge of everyday life. Major Glory, Helen, and the infragable Crunk in The Justice Friends. This is where we take the time to answer letters and email from you, our beloved viewers. Welcome to Cartoon Network Response. Here's a letter from Laverne. Dear Cartoon Network, what about the last episodes of the Pirates of Darkwater? I really, really want to know what happens to them. Laverne, what a great question. You are in luck, because right here in my hand are the only existing copies of the lost, never-before-seen episodes of the Pirates of Dark Water! Watch as the cat laps the milk. Lapping and lapping and lapping. Hey, who's been messing with the tapes? Lapping and lapping. Well, what the? Oh, wouldn't you lapping know it? Somebody must have taped over the last episodes of the Pirates of Dark Water. Well, until lapping. next time, pen pals, stay tuned for more of your letters right here on Cartoon Network Responds. 1997 would be the final year of what is known as the Checkerboard Era. And with the end of an era, it would begin the beginning of a new revolution in the history of Cartoon Network, a block that would become a mainstay for the channel, and one that would help bring a genre of animation more mainstream attention than ever before. This broadcast is intended solely for the enjoyment of our audiences. Any rebroadcast, broadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent and the consent of Tsunami and Cartoon Network is truly prohibited. <laughs>
Tsunami was a block of programming hosted by Space Ghost director Moltar, showcasing more action-oriented cartoons, including anime. It wasn't the first block to air anime like this in the West, but it was the first to market the kids and teens to actually acknowledge its Japanese origins. Anime was just beginning to trend in the US, and Cartoon Network was taking advantage of it, and a new market of slightly older kids who wanted more action. I'm Sailor Moon! We're gonna chew you up and spit you out! Now battling second, playing the 430 slot, are the classic heroes of the Super Friends. He's gonna fire that laser beam at us! Goodbye forever! For major offensive support, Dragon Ball Z stays in the 5 o'clock position. And the anchor, our cleanup man, is still Johnny Quest at 5.30. Purists may have some trouble adjusting, but trust me, you'll be pleased with the results. All we've got to do now is follow it. Crazy. Although in its first year, it wouldn't be close to the tsunami most remembered. Apart from being broadcast from Ghost Planet and hosted by Moltar, its initial year's broadcast would consist of Voltron, Thundercats, and The Real Adventures of Johnny Quest, as well as Cartoon Roulette which would be a random superhero action cartoon already airing on Cartoon Network at the time. While a very simple block show-wise, its style and attitude would catch on in a big way. It just needed some time to stretch its legs. Back on Cartoon Network proper, the What A Cartoon program was still going strong. The first cartoon to air this year was the second, technically third, pilot of Johnny Bravo, which would get its own series aired only a few months later. Say, baby, how's about you and I? Out of my way, mister! Get off of me, you son of a handbag! That ought to teach you a lesson in manners. And one of the most prolific shorts, Larry and Steve, created by then-unknown Seth MacFarlane, whose concept of a talking dog and a dim-witted Irishman would later go on to be developed into what we know as Family Guy. Listen to me. If, if you don't get me out of here, I will be put to sleep. Do you, are you listening? Do you understand me? You will be indirectly responsible for the resulting euthanasia. Oh boy, they got enough kids or whatever as it is. Watching the short, you can see many early aspects of Family Guy, including pop culture references. <laughs> Pardon me, would you have any yellow redneck mustard? Star Wars jokes. And, uh, look, this is your clan lord. You still haven't retained my weed wagon and random non-sequitur jokes, which may be considered early cutaways. Hi there, welcome to Quality Furnishings with quality, affordable items and only the finest in customer service. <laughs> Just ask our spokesman, Mickey the Xenophobic Scotsman. <laughs> <laughs> While many shorts wouldn't be picked up for full series orders, 1997 brought two new series that were born from the program. The first, airing on July 14, 1997, was the story of a man just trying to find love, or at least to Foxy Mama. Johnny Bravo. One, two, three, go! Way back. Sassy. Studley. Check the pets. Man, I'm pretty. Do the monkey with me. Hey there, baby. Yeah, whatever. Created by Van Partible, Johnny Bravo started as a short called Mesa Blues, about an Elvis impersonator that Van created for a senior project. But after graduating, he didn't have the type of portfolio that any studio was really looking for. But after his animation professor showed his work to a friend who worked at Hanna-Barbera, they loved it and invited him to create a short for the What a Cartoon program. As you can see from that script, your new show's gonna have it all. Uh-huh, right, yeah, get to do some karate. Good, some close-ups on my hair, that's good. Some flexing. Show off those muscles, mama. Something wrong? Well, yeah, something's wrong. You forgot the hot little mama side chick. I'm not gonna do a show without someone with curves standing next to me. We'll see what we can do. Look, Betty, try not to get any of your weird jelly stuff on my hair. Johnny Bravo, premiering Monday at 8 on Cartoon Network. The character was changed from a straight Elvis impersonator to more of a James Dean-like figure who only talked like Elvis. Johnny Bravo would get two What A Cartoon shorts and a spin-off short of Jungle Boy, which would make its way as a segment in the show proper later on. 
Well, it looks like the day has been saved again thanks to Jungle Boy. It seems as though Jungle Boy has single-handedly captured the hearts of millions here in the jungle. He is just too darn cute. Yeah, he's what all my kids talk about. Jungle Boy this, Jungle Boy that. He dammed up the river using my bod. Strangely, though the show was picked up and aired a full 13-episode season, it would be put on hiatus for two years for retooling, in which time Van Partible would be fired and a new director would be assigned to the job. After two more seasons, the show would again be put on hiatus for two more years, where Van Partible would be hired back to direct the fourth season, two specials, and even further down the line, a special called Johnny Bravo Goes Bollywood, which only aired in India. I told G it's a direct flight to India. 72 hours, five stopovers, four different countries. Oh, well, I guess coach class beats air class. Despite its troubled development, it's a series that's still remembered fondly, despite not being available to stream at the time of this writing and only having one season ever released on DVD. Hi, I'm Johnny Bravo, and hey, what the? Now, hold on a... Mama. Sorry about that, folks. Hey, look, I'm counting. Another show that's both remembered yet somehow forgotten, airing just one day after Johnny Bravo premiered, was the utterly bizarre creation that was Cow and Chicken. Mama had a chicken. Mama had a cow. Dad was proud. He didn't care how. <laughs> Created by David Fees, Cow and Chicken followed a cow named Cow and a chicken named Chicken, raised by two human parents named Mom and Dad. How did this combo come to be? They don't really care how. Chicken, that's a good way to lose a beak! Ah, uh, shut up, Cow! Mind your own beak! What? The show was carried by a legendary voice actor, Charlie Adler, who voices Cow, Chicken, and the Red Guy, a devilish character who is always trying to cause chaos. Oh, and doesn't wear pants. Oh, you, dear sweet grandma, safe and sound. The pilot slash what a cartoon short of Cow and Chicken was titled No Smoking and showed the Red Guy, here actually referred to as the devil, trying to kidnap Chicken and force him to hell by getting him to smoke cigarettes. Don't take him. It's not the right thing to do. And mom says to stay away from big dicky guys. Uh, back off! I'm a big chicken. Think I'm a little chicken? No, I'm big. Gotcha! Cow! 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 Cow is to save her brother by turning into her super cow persona. Super cow! While the pilot also worked as a sort of anti-smoking PSA, it was rarely aired on TV afterwards because of its portrayal of smoking, and the fact that the red guy was referred to by name as the devil. In the show proper, he would not have a solid name, usually just being some pun on the fact that he was pantsless. Uh, sorry, Mr. Slacksloff. Come on, Dr. No Pants! Geraldo, rear viewer! <laughs> I am Baron Von Nine Lederhosen! Uh... Dr. Bottom, you've been pinched? Oh, yes I have. The show was a rather unique one, pushing the limit on gross-out humor, slapstick, and adult jokes. So much so that it ran into controversy with one-time airing of an episode called The Buffalo Gals, an episode that aired once and has never been included in streaming or any releases of any kind. The episode was essentially one big lesbian joke about a group of lady bikers who go around munching carpet. Um, excuse me, sir. But who are you guys? We're the Buffalo Gals! Oh, the Buffalo Gals! A motorcycle riding gang that randomly bursts into people's homes and chews on their carpet! Buffalo Gals? Not a huge surprise it was banned, but the question should be, 
how it got aired in the first place. Who are you? I am Captain Cook. I want to be an action hero like the ones in this uh, comic book. Oh, really? That's a DC comic with superheroes who possess special powers and secret weapons. So it's your secret weapon, Captain Clock? You <laughs> A 500 pound partner. Medic. Available at Big Planet Comics. The show also had its own spin-off that started as a segment on the show and became its own half-hour show later on. I am Weasel. You don't need pants for the victory dance, cause Baboon's better than Weasel. I are Baboon big star cartoon. I am Weasel! I am Weasel! I am Weasel follows Weasel, played by Star Trek The Next Generation star Michael Dorn. Weasel is the perfect guy who is great at everything. That perfection makes him the most loved creature in the world. The only one who seems to have an issue with Weasel is a baboon named Baboon. Baboon is the polar opposite of Weasel, in that he is bad at everything. And many times, his actions to try and one-up Weasel causes issues that Weasel has to correct. <laughs> Shrieking Ray, I are discovering! This Ray will shrinking Weasel and I are until we very, very pigeony into hypodermic needle and then we squirting into bloodstream! While some episodes of the show would be included on various compilation DVDs and on and off streaming services for a bit, it would never get a real DVD release, except for Australia and the UK for some reason. Cartoon, cartoon, mister, what's that? No. Cartoon, cartoon, since you ask, it's something that I'll bother to repeat. Say it more than once and move your feet. I said, move your feet! Cartoon, cartoon, that like a man's man. Yes! Like doing the can can in Bora Bora whilst eating bonbons. Yes! Cartoon, cartoon, the union of two similar elements. You're killing my show, kid. Baboon, baboon! Yes! Cartoon, cartoon, I think you'll see. It's the most unequivocally doubly named thing on TV. Don't you agree? Don't you agree? Like wearing a mumble. Yes. With a tutu. Yeah. That's a no-no. Mm -hmm. Or a lulu. Baboon, baboon. Hey, cartoon, cartoon. In 1997, Cartoons like this started to be presented under the title of Cartoon Cartoons, which would separate them from either the legacy content on the channel or shows that they had gotten from syndication deals. While not the title for every original Cartoon Network show, it would be assigned to most comedy cartoons produced for and by Cartoon Network. Yes, Cartoon Network is the home of the greatest cartoon stars, but just because they're stars doesn't mean they don't make mistakes. It's bloopers of the cartoon stars. Take one. I'm so happy! Well, you're not really happy, you're sad, get it? It's funny! If you say so. Jetson, you're high! Uh, high! <laughs> uh, uh, it's not funny though, somebody gets hurt. Hey, gay! Cut! Sorry, Scoob! Jetson! You're fine! But, but Sister Macy! <laughs> Big 42. So, next time you're watching Cartoon Magic, just remember some of the hard work our dedicated professionals put in behind the scenes on the home of the greatest cartoon stars, Cartoon Network. Fix this sign. As Cartoon Network was winding down the checkerboard era, they would add more and more original segments in between shows and commercials. Some would be things like clips, just showing random clips from random episodes, from random cartoons. 
usually Looney Tunes. But there would also be original animated segments that would be either unique advertisements about different shows or the channel itself. These types of segments would signal the start of 1998, known as the powerhouse era. What many would consider the channel's peak. Dexter? Not just prizes, Dee Dee. It's the big prize in Dexter's Duplication Contest, where one lucky winner's room will be transformed into their very own laboratory, just like Dexter. To win the big prize, just send in your name, age, address, and phone number to Dexter's Duplication Contest, P.O. Box 7555, Atlanta, Georgia, 30357, or enter online. And a big phone, and a big computer, and a big... Hey, you're not Dexter! Enter to win the big prize. And remember, there are still hundreds of other great prizes to be won. And a big weird zappy thing, and a big telescope, and a big big Dexter. So keep watching Dexter's Lab every weeknight at 8 on Cartoon Network and enter to win the big prize. Hi. Uh, big sister not included. Brought to you by the all-new DZ with new stuff all the time. It's never the same zone twice. Are you ready for the new DZ? 1998 was another big year in establishing the Cartoon Network legacy. It began what is known as the Powerhouse Era. Named so because of the main theme of Cartoon Network at the time was the song Powerhouse. Cartoon, cartoon. While checkerboard promos were mostly reused footage put on a checkerboard background, with Powerhouse, we got brand new animated bumpers for almost every show airing on the regular Cartoon Network schedule, as well as new up next spots to show the upcoming schedule. In the start, these programs would be voiced by legendary actor and Simpsons alum Phil Hartman, although 1998 was also the same year of his tragic murder, so that didn't last long. If you can build a better mousetrap, the world will beat a path to your door. Tom will anyway. Tom and Jerry will return. Careful with that mallet you're swinging, Tom. Do I look like Jerry Mouse to you? Gee! No, Jerry, I don't think you're being paranoid. Tom really is out to get you. Tom and Jerry will return. Back to the pair that no health insurance company will touch. Tom and Jerry are back. You're watching Scooby-Doo on Cartoon Network. If it weren't for you interfering kids, if it weren't for you intrusive kids, yeah, the bad guys are right. Meddling kids just sounds better. Scooby-Doo will return. And I would have succeeded in showing more commercials, too, if it weren't for those meddling kids. They're back. The Powerhouse era would also bring a new avenue for airing movies, with the introduction of cartoon theater. From a prehistoric journey through the land before time to a tiny immigrant's inspiring American tale. From the dangerous quest of a dog called Balto to the television premiere of Batman's first animated movie, Cartoon Network brings you the finest feature-length animated films on television. It's Cartoon Network's Cartoon Theater, Saturday at 8 on Cartoon Network. With a new, more classy look from the previous iteration, Mr. Spim's Cartoon Theater, with still a bit of goofiness in the bumpers, Cartoon Theater would continue to show cartoon movies from the vast library of titles. The first movie aired being The Land Before Time. It's a typical day at Cartoon Network, where the cartoons are- I have to go party. <laughs> Must be the cute alarm. <laughs> now let's see who you really are. Hello, Daphne. You know what you call a test tube with a college degree? What? A graduated cylinder. The Animaniacs are coming to Cartoon Network, premiering next week at 8.30. I still have to go party! As the network grew, it would also gain more syndicated shows from its WB partners, 
such as Animaniacs, Tiny Toons, Freakazoid, and the wildly popular Batman the Animated Series. I am vengeance, vengeance, vengeance. I am the night, 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 the night. Tonight at 7. These were shows that were previously aired on Kids WB, but would make their way to Cartoon Network along with other WB shows to help strengthen the roster. Changes would also come to Toonami in the form of a new schedule and more anime. Thundercats was dropped from the schedule, as well as the random superhero cartoons. However, Super Friends was added to the schedule, along with Beast Wars, which was just still at its peak of popularity, even having its own Toonami contest. Catch Toonami all this week from 4 to 6, because we're going to war. Transformers are back for the 90s, and if you're a lucky kid, we'll send one right to your house, free of charge. For your station, my turn. Optimus Primal, Megatron, Silverbolt, Tarantulas, Cheetor. We've got 500 Beast War Transformers to give away, and it's all free number to do it. You get through, you get one. Just watch Toonami fall this week from 4 to 6 for your chance to win. In the way of anime, Robotech would also be added, as well as Sailor Moon, which was a big show to diversify the channel, as not just something for action, but something that would be considered more of a show for girls. That can still be enjoyed by boys. One, two, this one's going one, out two, to three, all four. the ladies. I am Sailor Moon! Champion of justice! After her! Ah! You're a strange boy, dear. You wanna see action? I'll give it to you. Uh, yeah. But the biggest premiere would be the show that would end up being a boom for not only Toonami, but for the channel in general. Get ready for a power trip. We're not here to bow down to your demands. We're here to fight. Dragon Ball Z was a manga slash anime series created by Akira Toriyama. It was actually a sequel series to Dragon Ball, although that would not be licensed and aired on the network until 2001. Funnily enough, Dragon Ball was the first series to be licensed by Funimation Productions, now known as Crunchyroll. However, that series dub was cancelled after only 12 episodes due to low ratings and syndication. Years later, Funimation would try it again to syndicate Dragon Ball Z and contacted Ocean Studios to produce a dub as they did with the initial run of Dragon Ball. The series was also censored to make it more kid-friendly, removing violence, blood, and even mentions of death, referring to it as moving to the next dimension, which in the canon of Dragon Ball Z is kind of the case. These edits also reduced the episode count from 67 to 53, and brought edited lines such as, Too bad it's Sunday, those buildings would have been filled up tomorrow. I've got a crick in my neck. This series was also cancelled in syndication, although unlike Dragon Ball, its ratings were strong. The reason for the cancellation seemed to be due to Saban, who helped with the production, wanting to focus more on their own work and their newly formed Fox Family Channel and Fox Kids Network. Looking for new and action-packed content, Toonami would begin airing the Ocean Group dub, as well as the first three movies. They would steal a child for the key to immortality, but now they must face his father, the Earth's greatest champion. Where 
Where's Gohan? You can't win. Let's go! His name is Goku. Can't beat me, I'll take you all on! This time I'm gonna finish you off for good. Bring it on! He will see the return of his son. Pray for those who took him. I will rule this and every other world! This Friday, the battle for our planet begins again. Cartoon Network presents a special Dragon Ball Z movie, Dead Zone, Friday at 4, only Toonami. That is no ordinary kid, Flash. The series did so well in Toonami that more episodes were ordered, but since the episode were done with a production company Funimation was no longer in business with, they decided to redub the episodes they already did, along with dubbing the new ones. Thus was born the first Funimation dub, a dub many Dragon Ball Z fans still know today. There can be light. Today at 5, Toonami gives you more power. That kid's gonna be stronger than all of us. I can do it. We're here to fight. Dragon Ball Z. Today at 5. Come by and watch the fireworks. Only Toonami. This would be the start of something big for Toonami. While they were originally pitched as being a place for action cartoons, they couldn't say that they were the place for the best action cartoons on the planet. But it wasn't just Toonami getting a new hit for action. And though Toonami was airing Sailor Moon, they wouldn't be the only place that we would see girls kicking ass. Powerpuff Girls, originally aired in the very first What a Cartoon short, and now finally airing its first episode over three years after that. Created by Craig McCracken, who during his time at CalArts, created a short called Whoop-Ass Stew, which while very early, still had many of the recognizable elements in the Powerpuff Girls show Powerpuff, including some villains like the Gang Green Gang and the Amoeba Boys. There was just one major difference. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. But Professor Utonium accidentally added a can of whoop ass to the concoction. Thus, the whoop ass girls were born. Using their ultra superpowers, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup have dedicated their lives to fighting crime and the forces of evil. Now, as you can probably imagine, even with how good a show may be, a name like that was never going to fly on a kid's network. So after a lot of work, the name Powerpuff Girls came up with, and the first short moved forward. Phone! Coming, coming! 
Yes. 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 Blossom's here. Blossom. Telephone. Okay. Here she comes. Downtown. Something terrible is happening. There's some evil villain down here turning everything into what? Oh my gosh. It's just awful. Yes? Just awful. What? What's awful? What's everything being turned into? Me. More issues came up as the original pilot did not go over well with the test audience of 11 year old boys. McCracken later recalling how they said, This is stupid. Little girls can't be heroes. The fact they didn't have fingers and bug eyes didn't help. So there was a plan to redesign the girls altogether. Craig like panicked that afternoon, right. and he came back that evening and redesigned the whole show in a night. I went, they're too weird. They don't have fingers, they don't have ears, and some people thought they were bugs. I was in that focus group. I had a problem with the fingers. But I got this call from Mike Lazo, and he basically told me, he said, Craig, look, we like this short. And I know you got a negative reaction, but I'm much more interested in a negative reaction than a lukewarm reaction. However, Mike Lazo believed in the show, and this belief paid off. Not only was the original What a Cartoon Short the highest rated of the bunch, but when the first episode of the proper series aired on November 18th, 1998, it was the highest rated premiere in the network's history at the time. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction, Chemical X. <laughs> Thus, the Powerpuff Girls were born! Using their ultra superpowers, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup have dedicated their lives to fighting crime and the forces of evil! would snowball into one of the Cartoon Network's most popular and most profitable shows. It would consistently be the network's highest rated show, and while there would be merch here and there for Dexter's Laboratory, and of course the well-established Hanna-Barbera names, Powerpuff Girls had merch of all kinds. Toys, video games, cereals, candy, apparel, and something called a sea watch. The Powerpuff time is 3 p.m. Yes, ma'am! What? and would eventually get a real, honest-to-goodness theatrical movie. It was so successful, Cartoon Network would try to reboot it years later, with diminishing results. It's party time! <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Powerpuff Girls left such a mark in the mainstream that a member of the Gang Green Game even became a member of the popular band, The Gorillas. I want you in the picture, that's why I'm calling you. Needless to say, the impact the Powerpuff Girls had is one that cannot, and more than likely, will never be forgotten for many years to come. And it came from one man's creativity, and one executive's willingness to give it a chance. My ability to talk with fish is of no help, Wonder Woman. Nothing can save you now, super fools! <laughs> what? The Powerpuff Girls? <laughs> Why do people always get that wrong? It's power pop! No D! How informative. Well, there is a D in destroy, as in destroy them! Destroy them! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
Thanks, Powerpuff Girls. No problem. We're big fans of old school. You girls are developing into quite the superheroes. Someday we'll be as developed as you! <laughs> As the What a Cartoon program was just airing its biggest hit to date, some changes were being made to it. It was ended in 1997 when Fred Siebert, the original frontrunner for the program, left Hanna Barbera to form Frederator Studios. It was taken over by then Cartoon Network Vice President Sam Register, who turned it into the Cartoon Cartoon Show, going off the new Cartoon Cartoon branding already in place. This new program would hope to do the same as the original, create new shorts that would hopefully catch on into the next big hit. The first of these shorts to air, around the same time as the Powerpuff Girls, was called Kenny and the Chimp. He be the chimpy, and his dim witted twin brother Kenny. Welcome to the secret laboratory of Professor Chimpers and Trillards! What? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, the, the crab claw is a minor setback in a super secret experiment I'm conducting to wipe out that reprehensible PTA board once and for all! Created by Mr. Warburton, who had previously worked on previous hit shows like Doug and Pepper Ann, the show would focus on a boy named Kenny and his chimp getting into wacky hijinks at the lamb of Professor Triple Extra Large. Now, Chimpy, you're not supposed to be messing around with these jars. There's bad stuff in them. Like this one here called Salmonella Fitzgerald. Hmm, sounds like the name of that famous jazz lady. But it's probably actually a super deadly disease. That is why chimps should not be allowed to touch these jars. Chimps are just not careful. Ah! While the short itself didn't lead to anything, it wouldn't be the last time that we would see Mr. Warburton's work on the channel. On the cusp of a new millennium, 1999 would bring more changes and more possibilities. The year would kick off with one of the first original Cartoon Network slash Cartoon Cartoons that didn't have any kind of connection to the What a Cartoon program. Ed and Nettie focuses on the misadventures of three similarly named friends who spend their days trying to scam the other kids in the cul-de-sac for jawbreaker money. The lawn chair's orbit earth ride is ready. Ticket booth ready. Betting zoo, A-OK. <laughs> they'll push, they'll shove, they'll pay big bucks to come to our Edland. The series was created by Danny Adonichi a previous animator on shows like The Smurfs and The Devil Team Rabbit, and the creator of something called The Brothers Grunt. Let me tell you about six wild cats. A monastery, yeah, that's where they're at. Their lives were simple, relaxed, and fun, till Perry became the chosen one. Chosen one, he's the brother named Perry. Oh, he freaks, he blows the monastery. The story of the brothers grunt. Ooh, they're always out on the hunt. Yeah, out of their minds. Oh, indeed they are. Trying to find Perry, Frank, Tony, Bing, Dean, Sammy. It's hard to find out for which you hunt And when your speech is a bunch of grunts And when you have incredible needs for Cold martinis and melted cheese The story of the brothers grunt Ooh, they're always out on the hunt There they go, out of their minds I see ya, trying to find Perry The story of the brothers grunt Boom! He originally created Ed and Eddie on a bet And pitched the show wholesale to Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon But since only one network would give him the creative freedom he demanded he went with Cartoon Network. One year ago, we embarked upon our most ambitious project to date. This January, we hope to finish it. Ed, Ed, and Eddie, coming this January to Cartoon Network. Ed and Eddie would go on to be one of the longest-running cartoon cartoons, even more so than the Powerpuff Girls, 
with Danny being there every step of the way, finally culminating in a finale movie that would, in a way, wrap up the story of the Eds. Beloved parents, it is with great shame that I regretfully confess. We are not long for this world! It wasn't my fault, I swear! Cheap movie. From director Danny Antonucci. The hills are alive, Eddie! Comes a motion picture event. This rage train ain't stopping till I thump those three twerps! Of enormous proportion. <laughs> Holy Toledo Splinter! Ed and Eddie's big picture show. Those jumps will never catch us now! Sunday, November 8th at 7, only on Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network offers this forum for opinions and editorials from our cartoon stars. Hi, I'm Zan. And I'm Jaina. And, and we're, we're the Wonder, Wonder Twins. Twins. Today we'd like to talk about what's real. And what's make-believe. That's right, Jaina. You see, some people might watch our show and think that they too can change into a big sheet of ice. Or a giant gorilla. Right again, sis. The thing of it is, we're superheroes from another planet with lots of special powers that most of you Earthlings just don't have. Wonder, Wonder Twin, Twin powers, powers activate. activate. So before you go and try to mutate into an algorithm rhythm tiger or a giant bucket of ice water remember this simple phrase wait a minute how come i always change into something lame like ice i'm always a wave or a puddle i don't know zan this isn't the time or the place to get into this well when are we going to talk about it what kind of superpower do i really have i mean when you get right down to it zan relax i could get beaten by a sponge wouldn't even have to be an evil sponge <laughs> just drop it zan i'm serious the opinions expressed in this editorial are not necessarily hey! those of cartoon network or its opinion with a new cartoon cartoon came more changes, the biggest being with Tsunami. Apart from the new shows like Reboot, the still popular Powerpuff Girls, and Ronin Warriors, Tsunami would receive a revolutionary new upgrade. objectives remain the same? My name is Tom. I'm the new Maltar. Welcome aboard the Ghost Planet Spaceship Absolution, Cartoon Network's first and only interstellar broadcast and exploration vehicle. I'll give you the tour later. From this day forward, she is completely responsible for all Toonami transmissions. I'm taking you guys into the new millennium. No big changes now, same show, same attitude. New place to do it, new guy to do it with. I'm not gonna waste any more time, let's get back into it. Later. Tsunami moved from a planet-bound station on Ghost Planet to a mobile broadcasting space cruiser known as the Absolution. Since every ship needs a captain, and Tsunami needed a host, the new Tsunami got both, in the form of Tom, a squat little robot who would lead us all on a new journey across space and some of the best action cartoons around. Smart heroes think their way around problems. I figured it out. I know what we have to do. Look at a situation, see what needs to be done. Ready? Man, I gotta tell you, those two are tougher than I thought. They also get a little technical assistance. Blink! Electric! 
Strong guys are different, not quite as pleasant, but sometimes downright ruthless. Don't ever try to stop me. Tom was originally voiced by known voice actor Sonny Strait, known for his roles of Krillin in the Funimation dub of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I got you good, sucker! I should win an award for that. And Usopp in the new Funimation dub of One Piece. Amateur, you call that pathetic blob a snowman? What? Behold, a soulful inspired work of art, the Snow Queen. He was joined by the Absolution's onboard AI, Sarah, voiced by singer Sally Timms. Well, oh, intruder alert. What are you talking about? I'm serious. Intruder, intruder alert. Stop it. Together they would lead Toonami into a more recognizable era, in a format that more people think of when they think of Toonami. It would continue to offer the best in anime and action cartoons, with a new hint of attitude as well, as well as the same game reviews and motivational speeches that were started with Moltar. There's no substitute for guts. Well, you've got to stand up to them. What? I'm talking about gumption, bravery, courage. Courage means having the strength to resist opposition, danger, or hardship. My dad taught me not to be scared of bullies like you. It can be a lot of things. Sticking by your friends can take courage. We stick together through thick and through thin, am I right? All right. Yeah. Being yourself takes courage. Think of any of your favorite heroes. They have courage in spades. I know the odds are against me, but if there's a way to win, I'm gonna find it. Even some of the bad guys have it. But most don't. Size isn't a factor. Neither is strength. I couldn't have won this one without you. Thanks, Enzo. It can't be measured except in action, so you've got to let your actions speak for you. Take it easy for now. Store up that courage and never know when you're going to need it. I'll never give up! It would also frequently feature fan art from all sorts of Tsunami faithful. You like to think you're an artist, don't you? An artist of great talent, unappreciated by those around her. Lucky for you, Tsunami supports creativity. I like being unique. Sometimes, going through your letters, we get little presents, like these. Check it out! Wow! Wow! Magnificent! Cool! Amaze! Mr. Popo and I are both very pleased with... Truly. We like presents, and got to thinking, how about more? Your turn! The last Friday of every month, we're putting the best drawings of your favorite Toonami characters on the air. Just send a picture to the address on your screen. If you're lucky, you'll see it on TV. Like these. Look at that! He's good. Yeah. Isn't it awesome? I loved it. It's ripping. Cool. Oh, wait, cool. Go for it. Time to go to work. Good luck. Carpe diem, baby. It was never shy about telling you what it thought about certain opinions surrounding them or their programs, such as their open hatred for Johnny Quest and the almost celebratory attitude they had when it was finally pulled from their lineup. Listen, uh, we need to talk. That's it, Johnny. The tank is as dry as a bone. I don't know how to tell you this, but we've been together for a few years now, I know, and, and lately, things haven't been the same. I, I think it's time we split up. Uh, what do you mean? Just for a while. Let's see how it goes, okay? I just want what's best for both of us. You understand? Let's just make sure we stay friends. Take care, baby. What's going on? Or the infamous Dragon Ball Z promo, which took out of context quotes from the Wall Street Journal and New York Times articles about how the show, which at the time was referred to as being too violent to show on a kids' network, like Cartoon Network, and used it as glowing praise for Toonami's then number one show. Here comes trouble. See the show the Wall Street Journal calls a huge cartoon hit. Who's laughing now? Cartoon Network has a new number one show. Mr. Popo and I are both very pleased with the progress we've made here. From this point on, there's no looking back. All right, boot camp is about to begin. Bring it on. Critics agree quality speaks for itself. Dragon Ball Z. Weekdays at 5. Who you will. The same day as the launch of the new Toonami, we saw a further expansion of the block, the Midnight Run. Hey, Insomniacs, finally there's a reason to stay up. All pilots, man your narratives. All pilots, man your narratives. 
Every Saturday at midnight, Toonami's taking over the TV. Toonami, the midnight run. Five hours of your favorite Toonami programming, past and present. Hey! Don't sleep on it. Love it. Love it. As the name suggested, the block ran at midnight and was more of the same great Toonami programming, but in a five hour block on Saturday nights. Much like how Toonami is in the modern day. Looks like we made it just in time. That cabin door was just about to shut tight. I guess you're not here, in this row. Wait a minute, something's not right. He's right. These seat numbers here, here, and here read right to left. Judging by this ticket, I'd say we're in for a long flight. Good thing I brought a thick paperback book. He's right, and this in-flight magazine is no match for a thick paperback book. We have got to get to that paperback bookstore. And the plane is starting to taxi, and fast. This looks like a job for... Sir, you need to stay in that seat while this plane is taxiing, and please keep your voices down. Thank you. Let's fly commercial. It'll be such fun. <sighs> Perfect. Cartoon Network. They made me check my shield. Keeping good cartoons where they really belong. Back on the Cartoon Network front, Mike Lubin Og had finally premiered for real. And putting her on this one. No. Now make it this one. Hi. There goes the neighborhood. The story of Mike a tomboyish girl from New York, somehow ends up on a tropical island away from modern civilization. However, she's taken in and tries to fit in with the island's residents, and attempts to introduce them to a little of her culture. Lou is the island's princess, part of the royalty of the island, and Og is a soft-spoken inventor, always making different inventions. With a cast of other wacky island natives, it was a show that many remember, but never really made a lasting impression. Where nobody goes, Airing on the same day, on November 12th, 1999, is a series that is beloved to the point that it was one of the first cartoon cartoons to have had a full DVD set released. We interrupt this program to bring you Courage, the Cowardly Dog Show! Starring Courage, the Cowardly Dog! Abandoned as a pup, he was found by Muriel, who lives in the middle of nowhere with her husband, Eustace Bay. But creepy stuff happens in nowhere. It's up to Courage to save his new home. Stupid dog, you made me look bad. Created by John Dilworth and coming out of the What a Cartoon program, Courage of the Cowardly Dog follows the terrifying adventures of a little scared dog named Courage, who overcomes his fear to protect his owners, Eustace and Muriel, from strange things that happen on a farm in nowhere. Return the slab. What? Return the slab. Oh, suffer my curse. What's your offer? The show had a unique mix of comedy and some genuinely unnerving and scary scenes. Hello, new friend. My name is Fred. The words you hear are in my head. I say I said my name is Fred, and I've been very naughty. It was a show that inspired nightmares, as well as humor, and even an uplifting message or two. Clearly a highlight of the cartoon cartoons. Speaking of, the cartoon cartoons were about to get a new home.
Rick Rickard. It's Friday, June 11th, and welcome to tonight's first Cartoon Cartoon Friday's lottery drawing. Cartoon Cartoon Friday started as a simple way to premiere new cartoon cartoons. The original setup of the block was a sort of lottery telethon. They would pick the shows that were playing that night using lottery balls and would take calls from random viewers to give away various prizes. Hello, friends. It's the first Friday of the Cartoon Cartoon Callathon, and the volunteers behind me are eager to start the callbacks. It's an exciting night, but before we do anything else, let's meet our first winner. Everyone ready? Yeah! yeah! Cartoon Cartoon! Congratulations. You've started the summer of winning. We're sending you an Ed, Ed, and Eddie cap and inflatable chair. Is your name Ed, Ed, or Eddie? What? Well, you still win. Allie, if you can take that for me. Now, while our volunteers are calling, let's meet someone whose name is Ed. Ed, what do you do? Wedgies. Wedgies? Why? To me, wedgies are a sign of friendship. Okay, well, we're not going to get that friendly tonight. Ed, how many wedgies do you think you've given? Hundreds. Great. Well, we're giving away 100 prizes to some lucky winners tonight, and one lucky volunteer is going to get a special wedgie from Ed. Stay tuned for a brand new episode of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and more winning. It would also include other live-action segments and bumpers, including ones with different mascot-like suits and various cartoon cartoon stars. Before the year 1999 ends, and before Cartoon Network would move into the new millennium, it had one more big event to roll out. Remain in your home. This is incredible. Just knocked out our military. Twisted genius. Mobs of people running. School has been canceled. The world's world leaders have agreed to his list of the members. The surrendation tribbles of that qualifying mother is insane. Presenting Ego Trip, starring Dexter. Premiering Friday, December 10th at 7 on Cartoon Network. The world will be watching. On December 10th, 1999, Cartoon Network aired its first original TV movie, and what would be the peak of Dexter's Laboratory. <laughs> Dexter. Hey, now there's an idea. Blast Dexter. Yes. Blast Dexter! Ego Trip revolved around Mandark, Dexter's arch rival, who was able to steal a device from Dexter that is made in the ruler of the world in the future. Dexter must travel through time and team up with different versions of himself from different time periods in order to stop Mandark and save the future. Hello! Hi! Hello! Hmm! Hello! Hey! What? Hello! Hi! Hello! Stop it! Who? What? Hello! Hi! Stop it! What? Hello! Hi! Hey! Stop it! What? Hello! Hi! Huh? Hello! Hi! Hello! What? Hey! Stop it! The film was the directorial debut of Gandhi Tartakovsky, and it would certainly not be his last. It would unfortunately be the last Gandhi would have to do with the series, being off the series from the remainder of the run. It would also be the last time voice actress Kristen Kavanaugh would voice the character of Dexter, being replaced with Candy Milo for the remaining run. Yet another scientific success. I must make a personal note of it. Christine would soon retire from acting in 2001 and would remain relatively secluded from public life until the tragic death in 2014 at the age of 51. How can I tell if my kid is getting involved with the Dexter? Oh, well, most importantly, he has an accent. You are stupid. If your child is speaking with an Eastern European accent and is not from Eastern Europe, um, has not been to Eastern Europe recently. If you don't live in an Eastern European neighborhood and your child is speaking with the accent... Do not step on my boots! There's your sign right there. 
Dexter's Lab, part of Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. Friday at 7, are you with us? The year 2000 would bring some changes to Cartoon Network, and one of the biggest would be to the Cartoon Cartoon Fridays block. In 2000, the show switched from the lottery theme to one that would be much more recognizable to ones who remember. Cartoon Cartoon Fridays would switch to a show hosted by the stars themselves. Every night would be hosted by a different character who would welcome the viewer, run down the schedule, introduce new shows and segments, and inform them of what is next as a reminder. Hello, Hello again, everyone. And boy, has a lot changed around here since the last time we hosted, huh? That's right. Coming up later tonight, it's Dexter's Laboratory right after Johnny Bravo. What happened to Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Not to worry, sir. Ed, Ed, and Eddie are now on at 10.30, our last show of the night. I see. And haven't I been seeing a new fellow wandering around the halls? That's right. That's Sheep, our newest cartoon cartoon. And we're going to be seeing another brand new Sheep in the Big City tonight at 9.30. How exciting! Hosts would include Dexter, Eustace, Johnny Bravo, Bubbles, and the Mayor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. I'm Ed, that's with the uh, 2Ds, and I'm uh, hosting tonight. Hey, how many times you gonna let that disc fall on you, Double D? Oh, yeah? Well, what kind of imbecile keeps throwing the thing when it keeps smacking you in the back of the head? A permanent goal, little man. Oh, for crying out loud, may I continue? With a change in format and a new look, it would also bring a new way to introduce new cartoons. Cartoon Cartoon Fridays would bring in a new version of the What a Cartoon program, The Big Pick. The Big Pick was a string of new Cartoon Cartoon pilots that were aired during the summer, and viewers would be able to vote on their favorite pilot, and it would be made into a proper Cartoon Cartoon series. Some of the biggest pilots aired on The Big Pick were The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Whatever Happened to Robot Jones, Long Hair and Double Dome, and Faux Paws, created by Chris Savino, who would later go on to create the hit show Loud House for Nick. It's the Gang Green Show on Cartoon Cartoon Weekend! Congratulations! Gang Green is the new Cartoon Cartoon on Cartoon Network near you! You go to the scene! No, I know it! No! Come on, girls! Powerful girls! Let's get out of here! Nice young men said they were just looking for their lost ferret, but they turned out to be the gang green gang, up to no good. Fooled again. Oh, <laughs> you rascals. Hey, oh well. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the big, big announcement. The moment you've all been waiting for. It is time for the christening of a new ship. Uh, 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 oh, no, you're right. That's not it. It's time to give somebody the key to the city of Townsville. Uh, 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 what's that? That's not mumbling. Oh, it's time to pick my nose! Oh, uh, no, the big pick, yes, the big pick. Gosh darn it, I forgot the big pick in all of this excitement. Thank you, Miss Bellum, for reminding me. Uh-huh. You, the people, have spoken, and the new cartoon cartoon is... The Wicked Awesome Gang Green Show is the newest... Hey, wait a minute, that's not right. That's a mid-season replacement or something like that. Uh, what's the new show? 
the new cartoon cartoon stars are Billy and Mandy. Congratulations, and welcome to Cartoon Network, Billy and Mandy. You will have your own show, named after you, of course, on Cartoon Network. And you will have lots of toys and action figures named after you. Oh, and limo rides and executive suites. Oh, I do love the executive suites. Such comfortable beds and the room service. <clears throat> Eventually, Grim Adventures would be voted as the winner of the big pick. It would later air as Grim and Evil. First day? Bah. Sheep in the big cafeteria. Stick to your own kind. Check it out, Boo Boo. Hey, gang. Bah. Hey, Fred. Now that he's friends with the Powerpuff Girls, Fred thinks he's too good for us. Mm. Get lost, sheep. You're on my seat. This table's reserved. Villains only. Come on, sheep. You can sit with us. Yes. Go sit with the freaks. <laughs> freaks? Have you looked in a mirror? <laughs> Listen up. When it comes right down to it, we're all freaks. Every one of us. And that's what makes this network great. Who you calling freak, freak? Yeah! <laughs> Cartoon Network. The best place for cartoons. <laughs> This is why I never come here anymore. Cartoon cartoons would see another big show in the form of Sheep in the Big City. The story of a sheep, named Sheep, trying to make it in the big city. While also avoiding a secret military organization who wanted to kidnap him to use him in their sheep-powered ray gun. Finally, I have harnessed nature's most awesome power. Dude. Silence! The power of sheep! Ooh. Now, every nation, except for New Zealand, will quake at our might like this. They go, oh, I'm quaking at the might. I'm so scared. Look at the quake. Created by Mo Williams, who previously created the offbeats for the Nickelodeon's Kablam, Sheep of the Big City was a unique show with unique comedy. A lot of puns, turns of phrases, meta jokes, and just things that were plain wacky. Hey, kids, how about a little ranting Swede? I'll tell you something that steams my clams. Supermarkets. I mean, what's so super about supermarkets? They can't fly through the air. They don't have x-ray vision. They don't rescue damsels in distress. They look to me like plain old ordinary mortal markets. They should say ordinary mortal markets. Come kick me. I can't do anything about it. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And another thing, if they have chocolate milk, why can't they have chocolate hamburgers? Oh, yeah! Now that's what I call ranting. One of my personal favorites from this era of cartoon cartoons. And despite it being a well-liked show, and the most popular show at the time when it premiered, it has had no significant home video release. It is not currently available for streaming on any platform. In the big city. We could also be seeing some major changes to Toonami, starting with the first ever tie-in event. The event was called The Intruder, and it would air a new episode daily during Toonami broadcasts. The Invader saw a mysterious blob thing invade the Absolution, and Tom needs to figure out what it is and how to get rid of it. Unfortunately, as many viewers would find out, he would not stand a chance in his current form. Fortunately, there was a backup plan, and Tom would live again.
Tom, can you hear me? Tom, I can't open that door. I need you on the bridge. All right. This thing is officially making me crazy. A week after Tom's death, we will be introduced to Tom 2, our new bigger and badder robot host, who made short work of the intruder by destroying the part of the absolution. That was easy enough. Three, two, one. Tom 2, while getting a slicker, cooler-looking body, would also get a new voice actor who would continue until his current iteration. That being Steve Bloom, who even at the time was an actor with a lot of work under his belt, including one of his most iconic roles being Spike Spiegel in Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> Are all the employees here like you? You've got some pretty classy moves for a corporate girl. The more that you know, the shorter your life will be. I love the kind of woman that can kick my ass. With an upgraded host, also came an upgraded lineup. With even more anime than before, in strictly action shows, Janami would start airing Batman and Superman the animated series. Trouble is brewing in Metropolis. Where's the Joker? You've got a front row seat for the story of the century. The death of Superman. Lex Luthor is looking to rub out Superman. Do I have a deal for you? I'm listening, so he's hired someone with experience. Now, only one person can protect the Man of Steel. The Joker has 20 pounds more where this came from. Thought you might like to know, but he's a little scary. What do you want? Information. Tsunami presents two of the greatest superheroes of all time. Together, stay back. Did I miss anything? Batman, Superman, a special one-hour thing you're learning. World's finest, next Friday at 5. Only to Tsunami. The anime we would begin airing started with not one, not two, but three Tenchi series. Tenchi Muyo, Tenchi in Tokyo, and Tenchi Universe. At this point, a lot of Tenchi is fairly obscure because of how poorly it has been preserved for physical and streaming releases. But if you want a great video about it, check out Hazel's channel, who I would consider to be the best anime YouTuber active at the moment. In the near future, one man is despised above all others. The world will not be destroyed. It will really change. A brilliant scientist who decided humanity wasn't worthy of inheriting the Earth. Mankind has grown too large. So big. When the tide rolled in, no one knew it would be forever. I do not accept this world. To it, I shall always say no. Now, the remaining land dwellers wage war against the hordes of Zorndike's creation for the right to survive. We would also see Blue Submarine Number 6, as well as the premiere of the series that would become a stable for the block in the same way Dragon Ball Z was. In the distant future, mankind has reached the stars, but the galaxy is troubled. What do you think you're doing? Don't fire! The Earth Sphere Alliance rules the outlying colonies with an iron fist. I'm sure God would understand the steps we're taking. Isn't it about time you people realized the ones posing the most threat are none other than yourselves? We've had enough! Those who oppose them... We won't be needing you any further. What? Die. Battles are waged with mobile suits, the key to military dominance. The only hope for the colonies, five elite soldiers and their legendary mobile suits called Gundams. There will be a day when the Gundams will save us all. What this is, is war. All of you are very mistaken, and the Gundams will soon come to rectify your mistakes. Silence! Now, these pilots will shake the foundations of the Alliance and change the course of history. You thought I was a kid and you underestimated me. You should be 
fighting it all! If they can stay alive. Those Gundam pilots are desperate. They'll battle even if it means forfeiting their lives. Mission accepted. It's a Gundam! Eliminate all obstacles. Just who are you anyway? Say goodbye. Get all mobile suits ready for combat at once! Fight and you! Don't die on me! From the Gundam universe, a new chapter in one of the greatest anime sagas of all time. Gundam Wing. Weekdays at 5.30. Suit up. Those who have laid eyes on a Gundam shall not live to tell about it. Only Toonami. The sixth TV series in the Gundam franchise, Gundam Wing was actually considered only a mild success in Japan. However, when it aired in Toonami, it was an instant hit, being the top of the ratings for much of its run. While the standard airings of Wings were of course edited for content, uncut episodes would be aired on the midnight run. It was said that Gundam Wing airing on Toonami was the biggest, if not single, contributing factor to the popularity of Gundam in the West. Since it was so popular, it even led to various model kits for the series be more easily accessible in the West. Earth is in trouble. Enemy attack! Enemy attack! We need the Gundam. It's here. All new Gundam wing action figure model kits. That's a mobile suit! Build your own Gundam mobile suit. A Gundam! Snap together multicolor pieces. No glue required. Extreme articulation. Pick your favorite or collect them all. Gundams are on Earth. Gundam Wing Action Figure Model Kits, only from Bandai. While well, edited still on the main Toonami broadcast, airings of Gundam Wing and Blue Submarine were the first real signs of Toonami's push towards an older audience. But this would not be the only time Toonami would push the limit on more adult anime that would premiere. As well, it would not be the last time Cartoon Network itself would attempt to appeal more to an adult audience. Cartoon Network had been experimenting since its inception to appeal more to adults and teenagers in a late-night block. They had already been airing uncensored versions of classic cartoons and late-night airings of Toonheads, late-night black and white, and O Canada, and of course the recent airings of the Midnight Run of Toonami, with uncut airings of Gundam. Mike Lazo and the team at William Street wanted to take more advantage of that. In the style of their previous hit Space Ghost Coast to Coast, William Street would premiere a few of these projects in secret, unadvertised airings at around 5 a.m., we would need to wait a little longer for this era of Cartoon Network to begin. Look, there goes Dexter, and there goes Sister Dee Dee. Oh boy, wonder what they're gonna get into today. Cartoon Network could also produce and air a series of musical shorts starting in 2000s. Songs that would be themed around a specific cartoon or cartoons that would air between shows and commercials. Some from notable bands and artists. The most remembered would be The Incredible Shrinking Day featuring Ed and Nettie. Courage the Cowardly Dog, performed by They Might Be Giants. Eustace, Muriel, somebody's at the door. Creepy, surreal, someone better get the door. Someone better get the door. Who's gonna get the door? Courage the cowardly dog. Courage the cowardly dog. Jabberjaw by artist Payne. So what? Who cares? We're doing it how we like. I'm singing it through my mic. A special underwater mic. Who's gonna say the word? Who's gonna say the days? Who may have cracked and steal an eerie house with you? Who's gonna talk like girlies and curly is it here? Who's gonna chase down villains and they turn around and run in fear? You know who I'm talking about? He's fat and short, I'm brain denied. 
and two cartoon music videos featuring songs from the band Soul Coffin. Rollin'. While the videos were not officially available to stream anywhere, probably due to several licensing issues, they all have been archived in various places online to watch and enjoy. Cartoon Cartoon Fridays would see another revamp in 2001. New segments were made with new hosts like Mojo Jojo, Ed and Eddie, Eustace and Muriel, as well as new segments from previous hosts like Dexter and Johnny Bravo. Cartoon Cartoon Friday! What are you doing here? I'm the host! What are you doing here? This is outrageous! I am the host! What's this? Another host? You don't even talk! I do sometimes! Looks like there's a scheduling conflict! Who did the schedule anyway? I think Bravo! Such incompetence! Such idiocy! We would also see the stars of the newest cartoon cartoon host, Larry, Otto, and Tud Russell of Time Squad. So, where are we again? Ancient China or something? This is not China, it's Cartoon Network! Wow! Cartoon Network is a history-making channel! And who do we fight? Them ribbon monsters? We don't fight anyone, you nitwit. We're hosting a show! Look out! The UFO! Come on out, you little alien people! I'll teach you to fly around scared folks! Wait! That's the Friday's disc! It's just part of the show! Oh, don't bother, Otto. He's not listening. Time Squad revolved around a group of time travelers whose mission it is to fix any errors or changes that occur in history, such as Eli Whitney inventing a flesh-eating robot. I wanted to do something to help mankind. And how is that helpful exactly? Uh, yeah. I guess I didn't think that one through too well. Or Abraham Lincoln being a bully. <laughs> The shaving cream's fresh. He wasn't here more than an hour ago. Along with a new series, Cartoon Cartoon Fridays would host their second and final big pick to determine a new cartoon cartoon. 
Welcome, everyone, to the moment you've all been waiting for, the Big Pick Winner Show. I am Weasel, and you are in for a treat. The votes have been tabulated, and now we're ready to count down the three cartoons who scored the highest this Big Pick weekend. Notable pilots included Kids Next Door, Imp Inc., and The Kitty Boo Boo Show. After weeks of new shows and voting, the Big Pick winner was Kids Next Door, which would be turned into a full-fledged series at the end of next year. Congratulations to the winner of this year's Big Pick. It's been an amazing weekend, and we'd like to thank all of you for voting for our next Cartoon Cartoon on Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. Keep your eyes peeled, won't you? So for all of my CCF compatriots and our newest members of the team, Grim and Evil, Hector, Hector Concarne, thank you for watching the Big Pick Winner Show here on the Cartoon Cartoon Fridays Big Pick Weekend. Good night, everyone. While things were looking good for cartoon cartoons and comedy series, they were looking even better in the realm of action. Toonami would be approaching its peak, with even more anime and action, including three new Gundam series. The original Mobile Suit Gundam. Universe of Century 0079. Mankind lives in colonies called Sides. But Side 3 has a secret. Take your sorrow and turn it into anger. The Principality of Zeon has declared war on the Earth. Now say goodbye. Now. The future depends on a boy with powers beyond comprehension. Those lightning reflexes, it's like he sees the future. His name, Amaro Ray. His weapon, Gundam. Your dirty tricks are no match against Gundam's immense power. Let me Tsunami presents the most groundbreaking anime saga of all time. Watch this, You're mine. Fully restored. Mobile Suit Gundam. Premieres Monday, July 23rd at 5. Suit up for the first time. Only Toonami. The 8th MS Team. Universal Century 0079. As the one-year war rages on, mass production of Gundam Mobile Suits has begun. This awesome technology is now given to Federation pilots. The power of a gun. In the jungles of Southeast Asia, Ensign Shiro Amada commands a squad of these giant suits. All units ambush for me. Give everything you got. Let's do it. This is getting fun now. Eat this. Meanwhile. Zeke. The Principality of Zeon is developing its own secret weapon. Opsilus. A ship with the power to destroy entire cities. Jabra's destroyed. Its pilot, Aina Sahali, forms the second half of an unlikely alliance. You want to kill yourself? You want to fight well, As Zeon and Federation forces march towards oblivion. The secret love of two enemies may be mankind's only hope for peace. Our forces will not be intimidated. Now do you see the vision? Vision Gundam 8 MS Team premieres Monday, July 23rd at midnight. Dig in. Only to mommy. At 0080. December, Universal Century 0079. Scrap, move forward defensive line. The one year war is drawing to a close. We're under attack by two gold type movie suits. The Earth Federation has the upper hand in the neutral colony side six. Report to your station. Elite Zeon Special Forces are dispatched to destroy the Federation's secret weapon, the Gundam. Zeon's only ally, an 11 year old boy named Alfred Izaruha. Yeah! For him, war was a distant game. Fighting inside a colony? You can't do this! Caught between loyalties, Al must make the ultimate choice. The stakes, life, and death. We're not playing games here, you know. The price of failure. This colony's going to be destroyed, all right? Nuclear annihilation. Gundam 0080, a midnight run exclusive. Premiering Monday, November 5th at 1230. In war, everyone's a casualty. Only to mommy. Most of which would air during the midnight run, due to its more adult subject material. However, what would make it to the main Toonami lineup would be a mix of film noir and giant robo known as Big O. 
This place is a town of forgetfulness. Forty years ago, everything we knew was destroyed. The face of the planet changed forever. There isn't anyone who really knows exactly what did happen. The survivors left without memories. In the aftermath, a new society has formed. I perform a much needed job here in the city of Amnesia. In Paradigm City, the rich close themselves into giant domes. While the poor must live without protection. But one man stands for something more. And he does it in serious style. As a professional, I just try to do my best. His name is Roger Smith, the negotiator. Try this. It goes against my principles, but I don't have a choice. His allies, an android, a butler. Leave this up to me. And big old. When they start a job, they always see it through. Rest in peace. Bye-bye. Enemies of Paradigm City, beware. There's a new robot on the block. You're not going anywhere. You're crazy little fool. You're going to get yourself killed. Time to finish this. We can't stay here. What do we do? We it once and for all. Big O, starting Monday, April 2nd at 5.30. Oh, Good guys. Still wear black only to mommy. As well as Outlaw Star. Legend speaks of the galactic ley line, offering the ultimate power of the universe to those who seek its glory. That is the mystery. Utilizing the latest technology, a living starship has been built with the power to find the galactic ley line. How did you come by that ship? I must know. The enemy's weapons are attempting to force open the hatch. By twist of fate, it has fallen into the hands of an outlaw. An outlaw not in the habit of listening to warnings. An outlaw named Gene Starwin. It's my last shell. You want to taste it? His luck is about to change. You must feel Gene Starwin's fate in line. Gene. Together with his crew of bounty hunters, he'll take to the stars. Go to the rings. I'll blow the to the rings. I'll blow this to the rings. Go! Outlaw Star. Weeknights at 12.30. Time to roll the dice. Only Toonami. As well, the mech anime craze would see another show come to Toonami in the form of Zoids. Premiering Monday, November 5th at 5. Join BitCloud at Liger Zero in their quest to be the best. Hey, that guy, you spy coward! How can you be so fast? Area scanned. Battlefield set up. Ready? Fight! Let's go! Time for a little action. Monday, November 5th at 5. What are you doing? An anime that was actually a sequel series called Zoid's New Century in Japan. Like Gundam, it also came with a series of model kits that would make its way to American stores. <laughs> Zoids, Mechanoid Combat Warriors. Your skill puts them together. Mechanical precision brings them to life. Build, customize, mobilize. Zoids. Each sold separately. Batteries not included. Some assembly required. Much like Cartoon Network, Toonami would benefit from getting shows previously aired on Kids WB. Toonami would get card captors. I'm going to make sure that we capture every one of those cards. For Sakura Avalon, life was all boys and school work. Does everyone know what their assignments are? Yeah! But an ancient book in the basement has changed everything. You gotta expect things. When you least expect them. When the cloud book opened, the world felt its fury. No! Now, Sakura and her friends must defeat the cloud cards one by one before they destroy the world. The greatest sorcerer on the planet is a 10-year-old girl, and the only thing scarier than battling the cards is doing her homework. These are the Guardians of Earth. Card Captors, Monday, June 4th at 5. It's all in the cards. You are a card captain now. Kids love it. And the Batman animated series follow-up, Batman Beyond. 
Gotham City is a wasteland. Deep in its valleys of iron and steel, super guns wreak havoc. Who's up for some laugh? The only hope for the future is the new Batman on the block. Let's go! Batman Beyond, weeknights at 6.30. Justice returns to Gotham. Only Toonami. As well, they would start airing the original Dragon Ball series in response to the mass popularity of the Z series. I'm making you both my students from this day forward. Here goes. Oh my, here goes. I can't let you hurt people. Real. My turn. Awesome. No, wait a second. I just love fighting. Speaking of WB bringovers. Cartoon Network would get its first original program from WB Studios. Premiering November 17th at 7, only on Cartoon Network. Working as the ultimate crossover between the WB's previous DC animated shows, Batman and Superman, Justice League would add even more heroes to the animated universe and team them up to battle even bigger threats. The show and its future sequel series would be seen as the pinnacle of the DC animated universe and a series that is yet to be overtaken. But even as good as Justice League was, and the new animated they exposed to the audience, Another Cartoon Network original would air in 2001, one that would take the world by storm and make an impression for years to come. Long ago in a distant land, I, Aku, the shape-shifting master of darkness, unleashed an unspeakable evil. But a foolish samurai warrior wielding a magic sword stepped forth to oppose me. Before the final blow was struck, I tore open a portal in time and flung him into the future, where my evil is law. Now the fool seeks to return to the past and undo the future that is our coup. I can back, back to the past and all my jack. Watch out! I can back, back to the past and all my jack. Jack, 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 jack. After finishing his work on Dexter's Laboratory, Genny Kodakovsky conceived the idea of Samurai Jack from his inspiration from the Kung Fu television series and his fascination with Samurai culture. Samurai Jack was a very unique series for the time. While it did have an overarching story, each episode would still be its own self-contained story of Jack interacting with a different aspect or setting in this future world. Many episodes would rely mostly on action, with very little comedy or even dialogue although it would still have its funny moments. The 
had a style and design that was like no other, with legendary voice actor Phil Lamar voicing the titular Jack, and the late great Mako as the evil warlord Aku. The show would run for four series, but the end of the show's production was so hectic that a proper ending could not be made in time. And while it would be tried many times after, it would need to wait for a while. Hey, you mind showing Ed to the audio booth? He's got a recording session. Thanks, big guy. Mm. I hope Ugg can find it been so long since Ugg done one. <laughs> What's your name again? Ed? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, with two... Early days, I walked through place and know everybody's name. <laughs> Those days over. Did you hit your head on? No. It just get crowded. Put a shirt on, Ugg. Nice tunic. They sell man clothes where you buy that? You coming? There's a boy on our show who calls his piece of wood plank. Uh, what's your piece of wood's name? Ugh, talk about timing. You're just the man we need. Could you loosen this mic stand? Bravo <laughs> was in here earlier and he just tightened it. And <laughs> Cartoon Cartoons would get one more addition to its lineup before the day was out. I am the Grim Reaper, ruler of the underworld. Well, at least I was until I met Billy and Mandy. Those kids don't deserve a friend like me. Ooh, wow, red. Let's go torture the Grim Reaper. The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, part of the Grim and Evil Show, tonight at 8.30, only on Cartoon Network. The previous big pick winner, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, was finally released as its own show, although it would also be paired with another Maxwell Adams creation, Evil Concarni, to create the show Grim and Evil. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't look behind you. While the Grimm episodes would focus on the continuing adventures of Billy and Mandy, and the enslaved Grim Reaper, evil segments revolved around a supervillain organization run by Hector Concarni, a former bigwig who is now reduced to just a brain and stomach, piloting a bear body to attempt to continue his work of ruling the world. Once upon a time, there was a jillionaire playboy who was blown up in a tremendous explosion. His brain survived. Stomach too! And was attached to the body of a stupid circus bear. I am that brain. My name is Hector Concarne, and I will one day rule the world! <laughs> But as Cartoon Network and Toonami were reaching their prime years, another era of Cartoon Network was about to begin. One that was a little bit more... adult. All kids out of the pool for adult swim. All kids out! Adult Swim was a block in development for a while, as Cartoon Network and Mike Lazo could see the potential of appealing to a more adult audience. Different projects were teased in various places and cons, but on September 2nd, 2001, it was finally time to enter the pool. No kids in the pool! 
You guys are good. That dog gets out every Sunday and Thursday at 10 for Adult Swim. Come on, let's go swimming. <laughs> it is at that time you will find a nice lineup of shows. <laughs> See you 2021. I like my body. I love my body. Space Ghost Coast to Coast. <laughs> good one, Jace. Oh, yeah, good one, Jace. Ah, now that's funny. Home Movies. Name's McGurk, and soccer's the game. The Brack Show. Brack, I can't see. Am I on the road? Not really. Cowboy Bebop. How you doing, kid? Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Fella, what are you doing? Here. Are you ready to rock? Coming this January is Baby Blues. That's a new one for us. How can you guys stand that noise? But keep in mind, no kids under 17 allowed. Adult Swim, Sunday and Thursday at 10, only on Cartoon Network. The first show to ever air in the block's history was actually a failed UPN show called Home Movies. Created by Brendan Small and Lauren Bochud, the show revolves around a kid played by Brendan Small, who coincidentally is also named Brendan Small, and his two friends, Melissa and Jason, making movies and going through little slice of life adventures. Uh, it's called the, the Dark Side of the Law. In a world. Turns out your old partner has gone dirty. Gone mad. He's gone dirty? He's a dirty cop. There stands one. People don't understand me. I wanted to make a difference. Cop. Jason, we, we went to the academy together. Fighting. You were a good cop. Don't try to sweet talk me. Against evil. I set up the bomb then with 3,000 wires. Blue wire. And, Green wire. And if you cut the wrong wire, the bomb Yellow will wire. explode. Don't. Injustice. Pink, Melissa. Blue or red? All right, here we go. Clip. Dark side of the law. What do you think? That's... Huh? You know, is it too early to start writing the speech? The show only lasted five episodes on UPM before it was canceled for low ratings. But the series was pitched to Mike Lazo, who snatched it up after only seeing two episodes seeing its potential immediately. Adult Swim bought the original UPN episodes, as well as the rest of the unaired first season. And the show would go on to air a total of four seasons on Adult Swim. Brendan, Melissa, what yes, are you doing? nothing. Listen up, right? Yeah, what do you think we're doing? We're talking. Hey, Brendan, you watch your mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Brendan. Insulting. Yeah? I'm addressing the team. Uh-huh. Right? That means you listen. That means you too, Melissa. Yes. Right? I'm looking at you too. <laughs> hey, everybody, guess what? Hey, Brendan. McGurk's gonna come after your mom. Brendan. That's gonna happen. Brendan, Brendan. sit down. Save your mom. No, I'm not coming after your mom. No. Brendan, you settle down right now. I'm <laughs> this not happened to me, I All swear right, that's to enough, God. Brendan. No, no, no. Brendan. I'm not finished. Brendan. I'm just getting started here. The series became a major cult hit because of its mix of improv and clever writing, as well as many cameos from comedic figures such as Paula Poundstone, Louis C.K., Mitch Hedberg, Jonathan Katz, M. Phillips, and Sam Cedar, to name a few. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Yeah? Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't come up here just to talk to you and chat. I was wondering what happened to Brendan Small yesterday. I understand uh -huh. uh, he was with you after school, and, you know, I uh, had a 3.30 practice, and uh, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. understanding, Lynch, was that uh, Brendan was going to be at practice yesterday. I need him at practice every day this week because we mm -hmm. got a game against Ken mm -hmm. coming up on oh. Saturday. Mm, that's a very important game, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. What do you actually teach, Lynch? I never understood exactly what you do. It's fourth grade. I teach all subjects except for soccer. Yeah. Well, I mean, soccer is not the only thing I teach, by the way. Really? That's correct. Hmm. Soccer is, is fall and winter. I have a spring sport as well, mm -hmm. which is also soccer. So uh, I guess I just teach soccer, but it's two seasons. The show continues to be a cult favorite among fans that could be argued helped launch many careers, if not elevate them including Brendan Small, who would use this as a foot in the door for his own Adult Swim show later down the line. Other shows aired on the block in the beginning were The Brack Show, a spinoff of Coast to Coast, focusing on Brack and his family life. Hey, can we play too? I should say so. It's our game, isn't it? Hey, let's wash ourselves. Oh yeah, then we'll be nice and clean when we get to the future. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah,
Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, another Space Ghost spinoff of sorts, focusing on an ex-superhero Harvey Birdman as his new career as a lawyer representing various Hanna-Barbera characters. State your name for the record. Black Vulcan. Uh, Mr. Vulcan, tell us about your superpower. Pure electricity. Ooh. In my pants. Oh, my. Sorry, man. Tell us, what would life be like without your powers? Well, you know how it is when the power goes out in your house? It would be like that, only in your pants. Indeed. Your witness. <laughs> Isn't it true that the reason you left the Super Friends is because you were fired? Fired? Fire! <laughs> Why? They said it was some sort of budget thing. But I think it's because I complained that they're always pairing me up with a white super friend. Like I was gonna start super looting the minute they weren't watching. And you think I named myself Black Vulcan? Hell no! I used to go by Super Volk. Black Vulcan was Aquaman's idea. And I said, well, maybe we should just call you Whitefish. C Lab 2021, a sort of parody of the original Hanna Barbera series C Lab 2020, which, much like Space Ghost Coast to Coast, would use animation assets from the original show and animate them into a brand new show. You just gotta keep cool and figure out a plan. You've been in tighter scrapes than this. second no no i'm fighting it off i'm gonna make it the block would also air reruns of space ghost coast to coast where does the courage come from to face the slings and arrows that show me no mercy how did you get this show caraton turned it down and the armies of darkness that show no end. Pound puppies? You have us following pound puppies. What's the matter, C-SPAN didn't have any reruns you could buy? Where does the courage come from? A little red light on top of that camera. We would also see the first anime aired on Adult Swim, Cowboy Bebop. Hey, what can I tell you? It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Truthfully, I don't think about those guys much since all that stuff went down. I got this one nailed. Take your best shot, kid. I'm sure she's out somewhere screwing up and getting in trouble. Men are such total idiots. I'm really not up for this. <laughs> There's nothing in this world to believe in. You know what they say, cowboy. Easy come, easy go. My power is the only power. Take him out and do it quick! I'm just watching a bad dream I never wake up from. Your partner is in deep trouble. Let's just say my past is catching up to me. People who go against the sea for food. Now is the small fry. Whatever happens, happens. Payback time. Hello there, my friend. Kind of dangerous, beautiful, ordinary. That you just can't leave alone. Adios. Sometimes it ain't pretty, but it's a living. First aired in Japan in 1998. The anime revolved around a group of bounty hunters in the year 2071. The anime was heavily inspired and injected with American music culture, with each episode name being a music reference. A mix of many different genres, the show became an instant cult hit, 
allowing it to run consistently on Adult Swim for years, as well as opening the door for even more anime on the block. But after a few weeks of Adult Swim's life, its most iconic show would make its way to air. My name is... Aqua Teen Hunger Force, yet another spinoff from Space Coast Coast to Coast, specifically from the episode Baffler Meal. Oh, someone doesn't know no, about Master the limited Shake. edition uh, Collector's Cup oh, deal. Oh, no, no, hey, Master Shake. Collect we, uh, all four from the entire Space Ghost gang. Space Ghost, Zorak, Brack, and... The NASCAR driver, Rusty Wallace. Where's my cup? Motar, uh... How can I put this? You scare children. The show revolves around three anthropomorphic food creatures. Originally, the show had the premise of them being detectives and solving crimes. However, this was only to get their foot in the door and get the series made. The main players in Aqua Teen were Master Shake, voiced by Dana Snyder, the brash, egotistical so-called leader of the team. Dancing is forbidden. Frylock, voiced by Carrie Means, the actual leader and brains of the team. Get in here and look at this! You ever hear a damn refrigerator or a freaking trash can? No. And Meatwad, voiced by series creator Dave Willis. Shake, hmm? where is my popsicle? Please, wait a second. I require a popsicle every 15 minutes. You obviously did not read the memo. Is this your memo? I don't even know what this is. No. Dave Willis would also voice side character who would turn more main cast named Carl. Carl, your hands. Yeah, I know, I see them, they're very big. Well, it was fun. I'm gonna go take a nap now, and then I think I'm gonna call uh, some hospitals. The series would quickly become a smash hit for the block, with its random quirky humor and limited animation. It would go on to become Adult Swim's longest running show before being overtaken by Robot Chicken, as well as the release of two movies, one in theaters and one straight to Blu-ray, and even a Christmas album. It's been a while since we reviewed a Final Fantasy game. But let's not dwell on the past. Picked up Final Fantasy X for the PS2. Sit down, it's gonna take a while. You don't want to move. Anyone who's played a Final Fantasy game will be expecting big things. Well, it's all that and a package ship. Yeah. Here we go! Won't spoil the story for you, but let's just say it's very long. Graphic-wise, it's everything you come to expect. You get seven playable characters. The battle system's been totally revamped. Maybe the best one yet. Don't worry, all of your favorite monsters are back and look better than ever. Charge! Don't sleep on the secret summoning aeons. I've done it. I have become a summoner. And make sure you check the mini games, especially the Blitz Ball. Don't ask. Remember experience points? They're out the window. The new system involves spheres, ability points, and, well, you'll figure it out. This time, the quest is shorter. Even with the extras, it will max out at 70 hours. Bottom line, it's the best-looking Final Fantasy yet. Check it out before next year when the whole thing goes online. Toonami gives Final Fantasy X an 8 out of 10. Utter wizardry. 2002 saw even more great shows coming to Toonami bolstering its action library and adding a surprise change to its regular format. Samurai Jack would start to air on the block, which seemed like it would be a perfect home for reruns. We have come to destroy you. Your search is over. Come and get me. The sword! The samurai! Long ago, he came to us in our time of need. His name was Jack. 
we could also see the heir of the latest incarnation of the Masters of the Universe franchise. He has come to enslave Eternia. I am Skeletor, overlord of evil. His power knows no limits. Have you the faintest inkling to whom you speak? His horrors will stop at nothing. Unfortunately, they don't stand a chance. I believe I'm going to gag. Toonami presents an all-new original series, Masters of the Universe. Friday, August 30th at 6, only Toonami. Created and aired 11 years after the previous Masters of the Universe revival attempt, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe was a series attempting to go back to the roots of the original Filmation series, including bringing back writers from the original series and expanding on the origins and backgrounds of the characters. Bye. The only thing that can stop his evil horde is a legend no one believes in. A hero shall burst. And a prince with an attitude. All this battle training is just fun and games. Now, a sword will choose its master. A boy will become a man. I have the power! And a hero will be born. Tsunami is proud to present... Man, like you've never seen him before in an all-new original movie, Masters of the Universe, Friday at 4, only Tsunami. We would also see two new entries to anime mix series that had previously aired on Tsunami, but in reality, both were series that were a bit older than the originals. The first was Zoid's Chaotic Century, which was the first Zoid series anime produced and aired in Japan before the one that first aired on Toonami. Fight's just beginning! Fire! War has awakened an ancient scourge. It's coming. What's coming, Fiona? An evil force that will bring destruction to this entire planet. The keys to its destruction depend on the courage of a brash young pilot, his mysterious organoid. Let's get him, Zeke! And the memories locked in a young girl's mind. Death, so Zoy. Chaotic Century, next Monday at 4.30. Now, there's a reason to rumble. Second was G Gundam, the anime that aired right before Gundam Wing in Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, over the years, Toonami's given you some of the greatest cartoon shows ever made. Now we're proud to present our newest edition, a program about love, honor, sacrifice, revenge, and a whole lot of destruction. Let's get things started! Gundam fight all set, ready, go! I will get rid of them with my own hands. Your crime shall not go unpunished. You still have to figure out my true identity. Let's do it. Now, fire! <laughs> Premiering next Monday at 5, only Toonami. But with all these new action cartoons, Toonami would get one last new edition this year that would be a little different. What's going on here? Well, they are kind of cute. While seemingly out of place in a block full of action, it did act as a bit of a palate cleanser and a somewhat foreshadowing of what the block would become in the future. No messages. Leave a message. Hello, Bunhilda. This is Elmer. I met you tonight at the bowling alley. I just wanted to say I had a great time and uh, I'd love it if you'd call me. My number is... Leave a message. Five 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 three eight three three. That's it. I just want to leave my number. Uh, okay. Leave a message. I just got out of a very serious relationship with a girl who turned out to be a wabbit, and that's why I'm acting so weird. It's not you. 
It's me, Mrs. Elmer. Do Fud. Leave a message. I don't think this is working out. Elmer? One Hilda? Great. Don't ever call me again. Cartoon Network would get more new shows, original and borrowed. The first new show would be Whatever Happened to Robot Jones, a rather odd series with a rather odd history. Your mission, watch whatever happens to Robot Jones. Friday at 9.30 on Cartoon Network. The pilot originally aired in 2000 as part of the program of viewers' choice to see what would get a full series order. And while the show lost out to Billy and Mandy, it was still given a full series order. The story of a robot boy named Robot Jones sent to a human school to learn more about them. Good morning, humans. The series had a sort of 1980s cartoon feel to it, in the way of the animation style and attitude. For the first season, Robot Jones's voice was provided by a Microsoft Word 98 text-to-speech program. Greetings, humans. What's up, Robo-Dude? Want to play some Monkey Kong Jr.? I accept your video challenge, human. But, I must warn you, my uncle is a Monkey Kong video game machine. However, starting in the second season, the voice was replaced by an actual child actor by the name of Bobby Block, who would also go back to redub Robot Jones lines for the first series episodes for reruns. Greetings, humans. What's up, Robo Dude? Want to play some Monkey Kong Jr.? I accept your video challenge, human. But I must warn you, my uncle is a Monkey Kong video game machine. We would also see the airing of the previous Big Pick winner in the form of the now named Codename Kids Next Door. Kids Next Door focus on the organization of kids ranked by numbers who help to fed kinkind from all sorts of threats from adults. The series started with just a small group of KND, labeled as numbers 1 through 5, who would battle against various adult enemies like Sticky Beard, Count Spankulot, Mr. Wink and Mr. Fib, and the Common Cold. Vitamin C! Two, but as the series went on, it would expand to show KND to be a more global organization battling threats all over the world, including the biggest threat, Father. At first, those kids next door were a minor nuisance. That's why I entrusted you with their destruction. But because of your failures, they constantly interfere with my schemes to have adults rule the world. That angers me. I will no longer tolerate failure. Destroy the kids next door, or else! Uh, yes, sir. Yes, we promise. Yes, sir. Of course. Of course. We promise. Yes, sir. Good. What are you waiting for? Um, can we borrow the really, really incredibly destructive machine? Pretty please? No, okay, okay, but I don't want to see so much as a scratch on it when you're done. With these original shows, Cartoon Network would also receive more cartoons that were previous hits on Kids WB, as well as finally getting in on two of the biggest crazes at the time. Pokemon. 
tonight at 9 on Cartoon Network. Pokemon is a franchise that really needs no introduction. Coming to America with the release of the first Red and Blue games in 1996, it soon exploded in popularity in American pop culture. Soon hundreds of toys, thousands of trading cards, and endless amounts of other merch would be produced, along with more games and of course the iconic anime series, first aired on Kids WB. Now they had made their way to Cartoon Network and they were taking full advantage, airing it in regular rotation on the network. Tonight at 9.30 on Cartoon Network. Another franchise with no need for an introduction is Yu-Gi-Oh! Based on the manga of the same name, and the base of the wildly popular card game, also of the same name. While not as big a hit as Pokemon, it still had a major impact on pop culture, and would see even more life on its new home on Cartoon Network. But 2002 was more known for one other major release. One that would be a major focus for the network. <laughs> It's not important where it happened. It's not important when it happened. It's not even important how it happened. What is important is... It happened. Hi, what's your name? Ah! Cartoon Network presents Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup in the Powerpuff Girls movie. Three mutant superheroes saving the world before bedtime. You dare to challenge me? <laughs> Only on the big screen, July 3rd. This is so cool. Releasing on July 3rd, 2002, the Powerpuff Girls movie was Cartoon Network's first attempt at a theatrical release. With many promos and advertising on Cartoon Network being dedicated to the movie, it was set to be a major success. Let me tell you about this movie, it's really great. There are three girls in it and they fly around and go, bleow, 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 and then this monkey comes in and is like, oh no, a monkey! Bleow, bleow, bleow. At least I hope that's what happened. The Powerpuff Girls movie, in theaters now, rated PG. However, it ended up being a box office failure for a number of reasons, including its lack of advertising outside of Cartoon Network, its change of tone and style from the actual series, and it coming out at the same time as the anticipated Men in Black 2. Greetings, I'm Space Ghost. I'm here to talk to you about the fantastic new Powerful Girls movie. I haven't seen it yet, but you will, because it has monkeys, I think. Maybe it doesn't have monkeys, but it should. I know it has Powderpuff Girls in it. They're personal friends of mine. Or are they? Find out this Christmas. The Powerpuff Girls movie, only in theaters July 3rd, rated PG. The movie itself is an origin story for the Powerpuff Girls themselves, showing the circumstances that led to its creation, the creation itself, and the origin of Mojo Jojo. Stop! Cease! Desist! Do not continue with your ramblings, for my ramblings are the ramblings to be obeyed, for I am the king, supreme leader, and all-around dictator! Don't you see? All you monkeys are my plan, so your plans are my plans, because you made plans, and my plan was to make you! I plan to rule the planet, not to have my plans plan to stop me! I am your creator! I am your king! I am Mojo Jojo! Obey me! While it was a box office flop, it would be highly rated among critics and fans, but it would mean that Cartoon Network would not attempt another theatrical release until 2007. So, Buttercup, what do you enjoy most about being a Powerpuff Girl? I get to use my fists. A lot. Any villains in particular you like using them on? Oh man, where do I start? Well, there's Mojo Jojo love quenching that chump. Jim. And the gang Green Gang are always hungry for knuckle sandwiches. But lately, my favorite punching bag would have to be Rocco Sacco. He thinks he's so tough. Ooh, look at me, my scary gloves. <laughs> You're known as the tough one. 
But what about your sensitive side? What about it? Nothing, nothing! So, uh, with all of that unsensitive fighting, do you worry about injuries? Nah, and I'll let you in on a little secret. Neither does Bubbles. Because when you see her doing the real dangerous stuff, it's actually me and a blonde wig. Hey! You and the girls have such cute names. Was it a special moment when the professor named you? So, we have Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, because it also begins with a B. Hmm. Next question. Townsville tabloids have linked you and Mitch Mitchelson romantically. Uh, Can Buttercup sit over here? Any truth to the rumor? Actually, we're just good friends. Boys are gross. So, what's next for Buttercup? Want to arm wrestle? Oh, gee, look at the time. See you later, Buttercup. 2002 was also a big time of change for Adult Swim. They started leaning in for more action anime of their own that fit with the later time slot. All kids out of the pool. Adult Swim. Shows would include various Gundams. Pilot candidate. Pilot candidate. Premier Saturday, February 23rd at midnight. Tenshi Universe. Are they all Tenshi's girlfriends? Well, sort of. Uh, please bear with us. Where's Tenshi? Tenshi Muriel. Yu Yu Hakusho. This is weird. That's it. Yu Yu Hakusho, premiering Saturday, February 23rd at 11. Outlaw Star and Inuyasha. My name is Kagome. Stupid. Sit, boy. Inuyasha in particular would be a huge hit for the block, consistently airing on Adult Swim until 2014. Adult Swim would also pick up several more failed shows from other networks, much in the same way as home movies. Although unlike home movies, no additional episodes were ever made under Adult Swim. The shows in question were Baby Blues, an adaptation of the still ongoing comic strip originally aired on the WB. The show was cancelled rather quickly by the WB, not even airing the last five episodes of its original season. It would only be when the show started airing on Vilt Swim that the unaired episodes would be aired. Unfortunately, while a second season was ordered and mostly finished, it was scrapped and written off when the show was cancelled, so that not even Vilt Swim had access to it. According to the creator, it may never see the light of day. Yeah, I can't get enough of her soft little neck. <laughs> and her cute little tummy. And her funny little... Here, she wants you. Also coming from the WB was Mission Hill, conceived by Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein, former showrunners of The Simpsons. Mission Hill was also quickly canceled by the WB before the series even finished airing, not completing until it came to Adult Swim. Funnily enough, the WB run ended after part one of a two-part episode, and viewers would not be able to see part two of the story until it came to Adult Swim two years later. Leanne, how can you just bring a stranger in here without asking us? Oh my god, I am, like, so sorry! <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys! Feel how good it feels to feel! The last show would be The Oblongs, based on the characters from the Creepy Susie picture book created by Angus Oblong, about a family of deformed abominations trying to make it in the world. The show was, no surprise, Originally aired on the WB, quickly canceled before the series fully aired, and finished its run on Adult Swim. Thanks for the hot chow, Milo. <laughs> Your mother should be beaten with an oar. While all three of these shows would be used to fill time slots in early Adult Swim, none of the shows would see the kind of success that would get them more episodes ordered like home movies. In fact, there were no original Adult Swim shows aired in 2002. But they had plans to change that with a series of pilots to find the next big hit. No eating in the pool. Tell that guy there's no eating in the pool. What is that? Pimento? What is that? Pimento cheese? What are you eating? What is that? Sir, 
What is that? No eating in the pool. In 2002, Adult Swim would start their own pilot program in an attempt to create even more original shows for the block. The first of which was a show called The Groovians, a series created by surrealist artist Kenny Sharp, with involvement from many names such as Paul Rubens, RuPaul, and the B-52s. The pilot was created for Adult Swim, but would later air on the network proper during the Cartoon Cartoon Fridays block. Despite the names attached and the use of state-of-the-art CG animation, the pilot was panned by both critics and viewers, but was not ultimately picked up. The show would later be pitched to VH1 and MTV, but nothing would ever come of it. The Finkel Files was a show about a boy with dreams of being a rock star who is instead sent to a school to train to be a rabbi. The Lewis Lectures, a show starring Jack Black as a dog giving lessons of life to other dogs, as well as Saddle Rash, a rather slow and boring pilot about an armless gunslinger in the Old West, which featured several characters voiced by John H. Benjamin. Well, say, stranger, how'd you lose your arms? In the war? Nope. Oh. What, are two grizzly bears, one on either side? No. Did you sleep on them wrong? Where can a fella get a drink around here? The highlight of these pilots was Welcome to Eltingville. <laughs> Adapted from the short-lived Eltingville comics from creator Evan Dorkins, the story revolves around the Eltingville Club, a group of the four most toxic nerds you've ever seen. comic was originally based on the experiences of the creator, but many of it is toned down for the pilot, although the main two, Bill and Josh, are still very violent. That wasn't fair! Josh's fat stupidity got me killed! I should be resurrected! I can't do that, Bill! You're the dungeon master, Jerry! You can do anything! Now bring me back to life, or I'll kill you! If you resurrect him, you gotta resurrect me! Me too! Oh, please! Oh, come hey, on! Hey, 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 you don't know guys! Guy. Guy. What the hell is going on down there?! Uh... Nothing, Mom! Nothing? You call medieval life and death nothing? The show, like the comic, would highlight the more toxic side of nerd fandoms. Something that makes the pilot still a timeless piece that is more relevant to this day. Oh, please! Oh, please! Oh, please, 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 please! Yes! Yes! I got it! Oh! oh. Hey! Hey, guys! Guys! Ah, great. Will it be to wanna be? Why can't somebody just put that little geek out of our misery? It's all right. Oh, I'm okay. Hey. Oh my God! Come on, come on! Hurry! Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got that too. Got it. Man, what a rip! Thanks for nothing, Willie. But it also expands the source by adding more side characters and even a little sister for Bill. Jane, where's mom hiding her mad as hell money? Uh, it's in her jewelry box, you creep. Ooh, money, money, I need that money! Uh, come on, come on. The pilot is amazing and miles above the other pilots produced. However, it seems the reason it was not picked up was because of the cost of producing a full series of this nature, which even at a glance was clear that it was much better animated and produced than not only the other pilots, but many of the other original shows in Adult Swim, who mostly relied on either limited animation or reused assets from the Hanna-Barbera library. Okay, guys, you know the rules. One question at a time, 30 seconds to answer, no hitting, no spitting, and no stupid crap like, what's Lucy Lawless's bra size? But I knew that one! As do all sad boys, Josh. Despite these new pilots being produced and aired, none of them moved forward in production. Oh. Oh, 
I'm not. Oh, sorry, Scrappy. No problem. My fault. Eustace. Scrap. Oh, do you work here? Um... Scrappy! Yeah, for a while now. I've been busting my hump at this network for years! I mean, who do you think's been keeping the cartoon mystery fresh all this time? But do I get the same treatment as them? Not even close! Can I help you? Oh, easy there, Scooby. My name is Scrappy! And I've been here longer than all of you! Longer than you, 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 and you! Oh, mama. The problem, as I see it, is too many cartoon cartoons! They're the kings and queens of this network, and they know it! Oh. I put in the hours, the late nights. Where's my key to the castle? You are here today, Scrappy? You are a genius. How'd you figure that out? <laughs> Cartoon Network, the best place for cartoons. Not for me. Not for me, man. It had been 10 years since Cartoon Network had first made its debut. And in that decade, it already made huge leaps in animation. From an idea that seemed like it would never work, to launching a place for classic and new shows, to continuing the mainstream appeal of anime, to even managing to create a space for a more adult audience to increase its overall appeal. Cartoon Network had made a huge bang, but it was time for them to keep making changes to try to keep the network competitive in the ever-changing market with two other big channels. Some of the changes would be for the better, some for the worst, but it would all come together to make the Cartoon Network the juggernaut it was. And we will see that continuing journey in part two. We'll cover the next decade of Cartoon Network. <laughs>